Hey friends, this is Trish with Crafting Cousins. We appreciate you stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will hit the subscribe button and come back often. And if you're a returning friend, thank you so much for your support. Today we have a super mega video that has over 100 mini DIYs to complete 14 different tier trays that cover every season. We know this is a super long video, so we are adding timestamps down in the description box to make it easy for you to go back to any tray that you like easily. We hope that you will sit back, relax, and get inspired to decorate your tear tray. Now, let's craft y'all. I'm going to be making an Easter tear tray and these pink truck salt and pepper shakers were the inspiration for the entire thing. Oh, I just love them so much. I purchased them at a store called Ross's for $5. I also purchased these gold bunnies from Target for $5, and they are one of my favorites for Easter as well. I'm going to be using these cute tags that are little trucks that say Happy Easter. I got them from the Dollar Tree. I'm also going to be using some wooden beads that are already painted. I got them from the Dollar Tree. You will need some jute twine some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree, some wooden beads in graduated sizes, a small wooden crate from the Dollar Tree, some jumbo craft sticks. I'm going to be using this bunny tag. I got it at the Dollar General for $1. One of these plain cutting boards that I got from the Dollar Tree. They are unfinished and ready to paint. This wooden bunny I also got at Target in a set of three pieces. Here are the other two. I'm going to be using the wooden bunny. I'm also going to be using the carrots in another piece for this tray. They cost $3. One of these wooden scoops that I got from Hobby Lobby, they come as a package of three. Some greenery that I pulled from my stash and cut off various flowers. Some Waverly chalk paint in the colors white, and pumpkin and also some chalk paint in the color Vintage Victorian. And later I decided to add chalk paint by Waverly in the color Celery. I'm also going to be using some acrylic paints. They are in the matte finish, a light purple and a light yellow, some word stickers that I got at Hobby Lobby, some thinner ribbons that I got at Hobby Lobby and Michaels, this cute ribbon on the left that has pink trucks on it. I think it goes perfectly with those salt and pepper shakers. And also some of this green mesh ribbon that I got at the Dollar Tree. And the first thing I did, of course, was take out that Waverly white chalk paint and everything that needed to be painted white at the beginning, I went ahead and put two good coats of the white Waverly chalk paint. And you can just ignore the rolling pin in the upper corner. I was going to make one, but I decided it really didn't add anything to this tray. To make the carrots to go on my tear tray, I'm going to first cut a chenille stem in half, and then I'm going to string on the beads in descending sizes, starting with the largest to the smallest, and then I'll just bend back my chenille stem to make sure they stay on. I think I had about five different sizes of beads by the time I finished it. I just pulled whatever I could find in the closet that would work for this project. And the first thing I did was give both of my carrots a coat of the Waverly chalk paint in the color pumpkin. I didn't paint them too heavily because I am going to change it up just a little bit in a moment. And I didn't have too much difficulty keeping them on the chenille stem, but if you do, you can always glue them down before you start actually painting them. My idea was first to string it on some jute twine, but then I decided I really like the looks of it on the chenille stem and they don't slide as much, so I kept it that way. Once the orange paint had completely dried, I came back in with some really watered down Waverly chalk paint in the color white, and I just gave it kind of an antiquing look or just to soften the color a bit so it wasn't so bright. And, and I used a paper towel to wipe off any excess that I didn't like. I'm just using a fan brush. And once that coat had dried, I'm coming in with my hot glue and I'm pushing down the smaller bead once I place some glue on the chenille stem, let that set. Then I come back and push everything down, take off the big bead, 
put on some glue on the chenille stem, then slide the largest bead down and just make sure everything's glued to my piece. And then I'm going to cut off any excess chenille stem that I need to with my wire cutters. I kept my project pretty simple. I'm just going to take my greenery and stick it down into the hole that's already on the top of the bead. You could also add some jute twine to dress it up a bit more, make a bow, but I kept mine simple. I'm going to use this little crate from the Dollar Tree to make a set of stacked books for my tear tray, but it has kind of these holes on the side. So I'm going to first of all, take my jumbo craft sticks and even them off and cut them just enough to fit inside the box and place a little glue and cover up those holes on both sides. This is just an extra step because I like mine to look as complete as possible. And then I come in with some more craft sticks and I measure off the ends of the boxes and I'm going to place three on each end just to give again that illusion of the books as much as possible. I'm just using my Tim Holtz scissors to cut them. You can also use those special cutters that you get on Amazon, but I find this works just as well. And when I get it like I want it, I just go in and glue them down with some hot glue. You could also use some wood glue. And the next thing we're going to do is give my piece a really good coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. I did about a coat and a half. I painted the entire outside, the top, and then I turned it over and painted that edge on the inside as well. Once it was thoroughly dry, I came in, used a little painter's tape and taped things off. And then I'm coming in with that vintage Victorian color and I'm going to paint what will be the top book and also the very top piece of the box because that is the outside of the book. This took two good coats because I had already placed on the white. So you might skip this step and just go straight for the pink. For the bottom book, I'm going to paint it in the light lavender. This is an acrylic paint, but it's in a matte finish, so it looks very close to chalk paint. Then I take a little bit of this floral wire, cut off a piece, and I'm going to make a bow. I'm going to make it not too big for the piece, I just simply twist that ribbon in my hands. I'm going to do five loops and we'll have, of course, the two tails sticking out. Not hard at all. And then I'll come in with my floral wire and I'm going to twist it around the back really tightly. And then, of course, we need to fluff the bow and dovetail the ends. Then I'll cut a piece of ribbon long enough to go around the entire set of books, making sure that I allow a complete truck on the very front of the books, because that just looks better than splitting up the truck. And I'll just wrap it around, attach it with some hot glue. And then just take a little hot glue and attach our bow right there on top towards the back. Once we have that, we want to decorate the front of the books. I'm going to be using these sticky words that I got from Hobby Lobby and mine says always loved and at the top I'm going to use one of these flat back eggs that also came from Hobby Lobby in a package and decorate that book. You could write your words in, you could use a paint pen, so many things you can do. So the first thing I'm going to do is make the tassel for this beaded tassel. I'm taking just a really strong piece of cardboard and I'm going to wrap the string around it, oh, about 30 times or so. And I decided I would make mine out of this pink and white twine that I got at Hobby Lobby. I just thought it went better with the piece. Once you get it like you want it, you want to tie that knot tight at the top, and then you want to come back in with another piece of string and tie a piece that's about a half an inch to three quarters down. And we'll secure that with some hot glue. And then we'll give our piece a haircut, cut off the end, even everything up. And I'm going to string my beads on some jute twine. So I just come in first of all and tie my tassel to the end of the jute twine, cut off that excess. And the hardest part of this whole project was choosing which truck to use. I second guessed myself several times, but I finally chose one. And then I'm just starting to lace on my beads. I didn't have a lot of beads in the pink color, so that kind of dictated how long my strand is going to be. So I used the off-white color they had in there, the pink and the blue. And once you get those strung on, you just want to tie your truck on the end. I just used the string that came with it. And that's pretty much it. 
you have a beaded tassel. For the little wooden bunny that I got at Target in the package, I of course painted him white. And now I'm going to take this napkin, make sure it's one ply, remove the backing, and I'm going to use some Mod Podge to attach it down to the bunny. And once I get that done and get him smooth, I'm going to apply some Mod Podge on the top as well. And I'm not going to let it dry before I come in with my lighter and I was going to burn off the excess. Did I scare y'all here? Because I kind of scared myself. I should have cut off the extra napkin and then come in with the lighter. So be careful if you do this and put a metal tray under it for goodness sakes. Don't do like I did. So I did have to come in with my utility knife and cut around the edges a little bit once it had dried some and the edges got burned. So I'm going to come in and give him a coat of the yellow paint on the outside and you could paint the back as well and that will just cover up all the boo-boos that I made. This yellow color is called Lemonade. The last thing I'm going to do is attach one of these paper roses right there to be the bunny's tail and that's it. After the white paint had completely dried, I'm going to come in with this celery paint by Waverly and I'm just going to paint the outer edge. You could probably paint the back as well. And once it dried, this wasn't a really dark color. I really loved it for spring, y'all. And I'm just going to use my hot glue and my precision tip and I'm going to apply glue to the back of those carrots that I got from Target and put them down right in the middle towards the bottom of the piece. I love how they're that soft orange. For this piece, I'm also going to have a messy bow. I'm going to use that mesh ribbon that I got from the Dollar Tree, also this carrot colored ribbon that came from Hobby Lobby, and also the one that's thin with carrots on it also came from Hobby Lobby. We'll cross them on an X, cinch them in the middle, and I'll take some jute twine, wrap it around several times, and tie a knot. And then I'll just come in and clean up my edges, make them look a lot better, cut them on an angle, and so forth. And the last thing to do is just attach it to our piece. Very simple, but so soft and beautiful. My tear tray is pretty tall, so I like to have a statement piece on top, and I'm going to use this sign that I got from the Dollar General. It's really cute by itself, so I don't have to do a lot to dress it up, but I am going to remove the string at the top with the beads, and I'm going to make just a simple messy bow once again, cutting different pieces of ribbon at five inches. I also cut another piece of ribbon to cinch it all together. You know how this goes. Really simple stuff, but I'm going to eventually attach my bow right to the middle of the top and that will hide the hole that's in the top part of this sign. I guess you really call it a tag. And just to dress the bow up a little further, I'm going to take one of these flat back eggs and attach it right there in the middle. So here I am getting the piece ready. I'm going to be using some tumbling tower blocks to make a stand for this piece. I took off the twine at the top. I attached two tumbling tower blocks together end to end, placed them on the back of the piece, and then placed more tumbling tower blocks on top until the piece sets nicely. And now I finally get to attach the bow. And with that, this project is complete. So simple, but I just love this tag, y'all. So this is one of those easy craft projects that didn't take hardly any time at all, but I didn't like just the white paint, so I decided to use that celery chalk paint by Waverly and come in and paint the entire back. This took two coats because I had already painted it white. So you can skip that step and go straight to the celery. And now I'm going to take some of those flat back eggs that I got from Hobby Lobby in a package and I'm going to glue three of them to the handle of the scoop. And what is Easter without a pink gingham bow? So I'm going to take this thin ribbon that I got from Michaels and I'm just going to twist it, oh, about three times on each side in my hand. 
And then I'm going to use some floral wire to twist around the middle. We'll cut off that excess, give it a good fluffy. And then we're going to add it to our piece right at the base of the third egg. And just to dress it up a little bit, I'm going to add one of these ribbon roses right there in the middle of it, and that will hide our wire. For our first project, we're going to use one of these mini grapevine wreaths that I got from Hobby Lobby. Some Spanish moss. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. You're going to need some miniature eggs. These are some small ornaments that my neighbor found for me at a yard sale, but you can use any mini eggs that you can find. I'm going to use some mini pearl bead trim that I got from Hobby Lobby. It was on sale for 50% off this week, so it was $2, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So this is really easy to put together. You're just going to pull out some of your Spanish moss, and then you start forming it into like a nest shape. You're going to press it down into your little grapevine wreath. This is going to hold it without any glue. It just kind of finishes off those edges for you and just keep playing around with it until you're happy with how it looks. Now I'm going to take two of my eggs, I chose a yellow and a blue, and I went ahead and pulled those strings out of the end and made sure that that was all I wanted in my nest. Y'all know that I'm a little bit extra, so I decided to add some pearls to this. I grabbed this mini pearl bead trim that I got from Hobby Lobby, and I just start gluing it around the edges. I want it to kind of look like the bird found this trim in the yard and just kind of weaved it into its nest. I keep going around. I put just a little dot of glue in different places and stick it down in there. I didn't glue all of it. I want it to be kind of loose and I just kept wrapping it until I was happy with it. Once I got around to the end and I was happy with how it looked, I glued down the end and trimmed off the edges. Now we're just going to glue our little eggs back into our nest so they don't fall out. And once we do that, this project is finished. For this project, we're going to use some of these mini pink roses that I got from Hobby Lobby. They were on sale for 50% off as well. I had some of these last year and I used them in so many projects. I just love them. So I wanted to get another bunch of them for this year. We're also going to use this place card holder. It's over in the wedding section and it was 50% off as well. So it was $1.50. I love that it stands up and it is so decorative. We're going to use our glue gun and some glue sticks. And at the last minute, I decided to use some of this moss that I got from Walmart, but you really don't need it. The first thing I did was remove the paper and the plastic from the frame and then I just put down some hot glue and I'm going to glue a little bit of that moss down into it. Now this step really was not necessary. I wasn't sure if my flowers were going to cover it all and you wouldn't be able to see the cardboard and that was why I put it down. But once I started putting my flowers in there, it completely covered this so you really don't have to do this step. 
Now I'm just going to take my individual flowers and I cut off the back of them to make them flat so that they will stick down in there. And then we're gonna add hot glue and then glue them down. You're just gonna keep doing this until you get your frame full. Now I'm using all the same flowers, but I got this idea off of Pinterest and the one that I saw, they use several different kinds of flowers. And I think that would be pretty too, but y'all know that Kay and I love some pink roses. so. I wanted to do mine with these little pretty roses. Once you get your frame full, this project is finished. For this project, we're going to use some of these mini thimbles. I think I got these at Hobby Lobby a couple of years ago. I don't know if they still have them this small, but I do know that they still have the wooden thimbles. We're gonna use some of these bamboo skewers. I got mine from the Dollar Tree. Some of these little wooden pieces that I got from Hobby Lobby. They're over in the spring section and they're 40% off. There are so many cute little pieces in here that we could use for so many different projects. We're going to use some acrylic paint in Cameo Pink. This is by Apple Barrel. Some of these flat back pearl stickers that I got from the Dollar Tree some waxed twine. I got this from the thrift store. You could really use any twine that you wanted to use and some leaves off this little green bush. I may use some of this gold wire on some of the birds and my glue gun and my glue sticks. So I picked out three of the little flowers that I really liked. Y'all, these are all so cute. There's so many things that you can do with them. Then I went and grabbed some orange paint and some yellow paint as well. I wanted my flowers to all be different colors, but now you do these in whatever colors you want. This is just an idea for you. I'm going to paint each one of them a different color. I painted my little sunflower looking one yellow, the little dandelion looking one orange and then my other flower pink i'm not sure what it is but it was really cute i do paint both sides of these and then we're going to leave them to dry i did end up pulling one of the other little flowers that already has the leaves on it i thought it was so cute and i painted it blue and green but i was out of the camera range and you couldn't see it i'm sorry but that's all i did to it then I took one of those little white balls off of that greenery and I glued it into the center of my yellow flower. And I'm gonna use my flat back pearls and glue one into the center of each of my other flowers. For that little blue one, I'm gonna put another one of those little foam balls inside of it too. And I thought that turned out so cute. Now I'm going to take those little thimbles and some of my wax twine and I'm just going to wrap it around so that it looks like there's thread on my thimble. I just put a little bit of hot glue on one end. I put my twine into it and I wrap it around and then I glue down the other end and then I trim it off. That's all there is to this. I did this for all four of my little thimbles. I want to put a bow on there and these are small. So the best way to make a small bow is using a fork. I'm going to hold my thread on one end and wrap it around the top of my fork. Then I'm going to come in between the first and second tine, go around the back and come up between the third and fourth tine. Then you're gonna stick it in between the middle at the bottom and then come up around the back and pull it through the middle at the top and tie it into a knot. This is going to make a small bow. Now I will put a link to the video where I show this with some ribbon and it's slowed down and you can tell more about what I'm doing but these are so easy to make and they make the cutest little bow. We're just going to slip it off and then we're going to trim off those ends and there's our bow. I'll use a little bit of hot glue and attach it to the front of my thimble and then I'm gonna go ahead and do this for the other three thimbles as well. Now I'm just gonna take that little blue flower and just kind of shove it down into my thimble. It held perfectly and how cute is that? 
for the other three, I'm going to use a skewer. I stick it down in there and then I use my wire cutters to cut off the skewer. I did all three of these at different lengths because I want my flowers to stand staggered. So you're just sticking them in there, measuring how long you want it to be, and then cut off the end of it. Once I got them cut off, I used just a little bit of hot glue on the end and glue them down into my thimbles. Now I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of my flower and glue it onto my little skewer. And I have my flower on its stand. I took that little bush that I had and I cut off some of those little leaves and I put a little bit of hot glue on the end and then I glued two on the yellow one. I think I only do one, no I do two on the orange one, but I didn't put any on the pink. With that, this project is finished. I love those little birds so much, I had to give them some feet so that they would stand up. Now, I've already done one, but I'm going to show you how I did it. I took some of my craft wire, I had gotten this from Hobby Lobby, and I just cut off a piece of it and I bend over the end. You're going to make just a little loop at the end, and then I use my pliers and kind of close it up. Then you're going to bend it back, kind of like a V and close that just a little bit. I don't want it as close as the first one, but I didn't want it as far as it was. And then you're gonna bend it back just like you did the first time and make another loop and close that up with your pliers. All I'm doing is pressing this and it's closing up those loops. See, there's his feet. Now for his leg, I'm just going to pull it up, straight up at the back and then trim it off as long as you want it to be for his leg. And there you go, you got his feet and his leg. Y'all, these are so simple. I'm gonna use my little awl here. That was really all I had. And I was trying to put a little hole in there, but it broke just a little bit, but that's okay. I put a little bit of hot glue on there, stick my wire up in there, and then press that wood back down on top of it. And it's in there perfectly. And my little bird stands up. Now I'm going to use some pale blue acrylic paint. You use whatever color you want. And I'm going to paint my little bird's body. I do paint the front and the back of this because I like for my projects to always look finished. Once I get this painted, we're gonna set it aside and let it dry. Now that our paint is dry, I'm gonna come in with a black permanent marker and fill in his little beak. And once I do that, these little birdies are finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little bird houses that I got from the Dollar Tree. Now, if your Dollar Tree don't have these, they also carry these at Walmart. Some Waverly chalk paint in white and some of these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I love these spring transfers and I thought that we could layer them up and give this like a multimedia effect. The first thing I'm gonna do is paint my birdhouse with my white chalk paint. I do paint the top, the bottom, all the edges. I want everything to be covered with this. Now, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I wanted a nice white background for my rub-on transfers. While my paint is still wet, I took some pink acrylic paint that I had and I start kind of distressing it. I just put some of my pink paint on. If I felt like I had too much, I put a little bit more white paint on there and then I would just kind of smooth it in until you could see the pink popping out but it wasn't overwhelming it y'all I love this effect y'all know I love pink and I love distressing with it. I thought it looked so cute. Once our paint was dry, I opened up my little rub on transfers and I just started picking out ones that I want. All you have to do is cut them apart, lay them where you want, and then use a scraper of some kind or a credit card or even your fingernail. And you rub all over the top of it really firmly and it transfers it onto your project. Now it doesn't always do it the first time. Sometimes you have to go back and rub some more to make it stick. But y'all, I 
love these. Now they're all automatically layered together on this one and I love that look. Y'all know I love mixed media. I love layering. So I just went with that. I would cut apart pieces of this and then I would put it into all the little edges and I'd scrub over it and then lift it up. On some of them I actually wrapped it over to the other side so that it looked like it went over and it looks like it was meant to be this way. Y'all these turned out so cute. I totally love this. Now if this layered mixed media effect is not your cup of tea you could just paint this, maybe add a little bit of flowers, just decorate your little birdhouse to put on your tear tray, however you like. But y'all, I love this. I could not get enough. I ended up using that whole pack of those layered stickers, and then I used several off the other pack as well. Once I got all my stickers on there and I was happy with how it looked, this project was finished. For this project, I'm going to use one of these little baby socks. I got this pack at the Dollar Tree. Some faux fur that I had left over from some other projects. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby. Some fabric off of this shirt. I got it at the thrift store and I just love how soft it is. I'll probably use the hemmed edge. I'm going to use a wooden bead a couple of these little elastic bands and some filling out of this pillow that I also got from the thrift store. Now to make our body, I'm just gonna take some of my filling and I'm gonna stuff it into one of my little socks. Now I don't want this to be too big because my tear tray isn't huge and I want to make sure that it will sit in there. So I just kind of stuff it in, then I trim off the top. We're gonna use a couple of our elastic bands and wrap around the top of this just to close it off. And then you're gonna kind of form it. I wanted to push it so that it would sit down and I trimmed off the top. Now I'm going to use that pink fabric to make a hat and I was really too lazy to make a pattern so I just cut off a rectangle and we'll work with that. Then I took my faux fur and kind of measured how far around this I want it to go. And once I did that, I cut it off and then I cut off the bottom as long as I want it. And then you're just going to kind of trim it up, you know, just kind of make sure that it's in that V pattern. I put some hot glue on it and I glue it right on to the front of the little body, making sure that I wrap it around, adding more glue where needed. Now that I have his beard on, we're gonna take that pink fabric and make his hat. Y'all, this truly is the lazy way of doing it. There are so many patterns on the internet for gnome hats. You can Google it and print it out and you don't have to do this. You could just cut it out. But I was pretty happy with how it turned out. I cut it into a rectangle, then I glued those sides together. Then I just kept working my way up the seam of this, trimming where I needed and gluing until it was all glued together. This fabric is soft and fuzzy and very forgiving. So I was able to go back up and go down that seam and glue everything down and it turned out looking really nice. Now that I have his hat, I'm going to put it on the way I want it and then I'll put a little bit of glue at the back just to hold it down there. I'm gonna use my little wooden ball bead and I'm gonna glue it down right at the top of my beard under my hat and then glue my hat down around the nose. How cute is he? Now I want this to be more spring so I flipped this little end of his hat over. Y'all know I love that look and I glue down the end of it. Then I take some of these little white miniature roses. I got these from Hobby Lobby and I cut off a couple of them. I'm going to trim the back off so that it's flat and use a little bit of hot glue and glue it to the end of his little hat there. Then I'm going to put that little leaf on the back of it. I wanted one more just to fill it out, so I'm gonna trim up one more and glue it in right at the top of that one, and with that, the project will be finished. For this project, I'm going to be making a bead garland. Y'all know I have to have one. So I'm gonna use one of these little wooden discs from Walmart. 
the round part of this spring printable i will put a copy of this down below if you guys would like to have a copy of it and all three will be included some of this sheer pink ribbon i've had it forever but i think it actually originally came from hobby lobby some white flat lace i got this from walmart some white wooden beads my hole puncher some mod podge some waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper pink so the first thing i'm going to do is paint my little disc i did paint the front and the back of this and the sides and then i'm going to leave it to dry then i'm going to take 10 of those white wooden beads i'm going to put them on a skewer and use that same ballet slipper pink paint and give them a good coat and leave them to dry as well Now we're just going to cut our little printable out. Y'all, I think this is so pretty. Y'all know how much we love pink flowers. And once I get it cut out, I decided to take some distressing ink and my little spouncer and go around the edges of this and distress it. To me, this just kicks it up a notch. It makes it look more like something professional instead of cut and paste. Now we're going to put a little bit of our Mod Podge down onto our disc and put our print down on top of that and smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles that we may have. I'm going to take my little spouncer and go around the edges of my wood and just kind of blend it in and make it all look like it belongs. Now we're going to use our hole puncher and punch a hole right in the top. To make my tassel, I'm going to use some of my flat lace and this little book I have. It's about four inches and I just wrap the lace around about six times and then I'm wrapping that pink ribbon around about 20 times. Just keep going until it's as thick as you want. Now I'm going to use a little bit more of my ribbon, push it up under there and pull it all the way to the top of the spine. Then you're going to slip off your loops and tie a double knot into the top. This is going to secure them to your ribbon. Now I'm going to measure off about 23 inches and cut my ribbon. Then I open up my loops and I cut them open at the bottom. Now I'm just going to smooth this out and gather it up. I'm going to take another little piece of my ribbon, wrap around the top of this about three times, and then tie it into a double knot at the top, and this is going to form my tassel. We'll trim that off. Then I'm going to gather it up and trim it off at the bottom and just make it look pretty. Now I'm going to use a darning needle. I'm going to thread my ribbon through there and I'm going to put one of my white beads on there. Then I decided, you know, I want it to cover this up. So I put a little bit of glue and glued those two inches of that ribbon down. And then my bead just slid right over the top of this and you can't even see where it ends. I decided to do a pattern of two white and one pink beads all the way down this and I do it until I've used all 10 of my pink beads. Once I had gotten my last pink bead on, I'm going to put two more of my white beads and that'll be the end of my garland. Now that I have all my beads on, I'm going to string my ribbon through my little disc there. I'll tie it into a triple knot. You can only do a double if you want. I like the triple. Then I'll trim off my ribbon and with that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little signs that I got from Dollar General. I get them at the end of the season. They mark them down 90% off, so I only have to pay 10 cents for these. And they seem to have one or two after every season. Now, this does have a hole in the top, but I'm not real worried about it. We'll just flip it upside down and you'll never know it. Some Waverly chalk paint in ballet slipper pink. Another one of our little spring printables. Don't forget, I'll have a link below some Mod Podge, and my Distressing Ink and a Dauber. So the paper was already coming off the front of this, and I didn't want it to buckle when I painted it, so I grabbed my sanding sponge and just smoothed it out as best as I could. Now we're going to paint the whole thing with our Ballet Slipper Pink Paint. It only took one coat. I did paint the front, the back, and all the sides, and then I left it to dry.
Now we're going to take our little print that we cut out and again I'm going to use my distressing ink and my dauber and go around those edges just to finish them off and kind of give them a professional look. Y'all, I really do think this makes all the difference in the world. When you do this, it doesn't look like you printed something off your computer and glued it to the front of a piece of wood. Now we are going to put some Mod Podge down on the front of this. You don't want to use too much because that causes more wrinkles. I'm going to spread it out really good, put my print on, and then we're going to smooth out any wrinkles or bubbles that we have. I like using this little brayer, but you could also just use your fingers. Then we're going to take our ink and our dauber and go around those edges and blend them in a little more. And once we do that, this project is finished. For this project, I'm going to use a little piece of one of those wood plaques that come from the Dollar Tree. This had been cut down for another project and this one was left over, so we're going to use it. We're going to use a tumbling tower block from the Dollar Tree, a furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, some Mod Podge, our last little printable from our spring prints, and my distressing ink and a dauber. So the first thing I wanted to do was cut down my little printable so that it would fit my piece of wood. I held it up, I could see it through it, and got it centered. Then I just trace around it on the back of this and cut it out. Now I know it's going to fit. I'm going to use one of my furniture repair markers that I get from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to stain the edges and the back of this. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I really like having my projects look finished, but a lot of people like the unfinished wood. Now, I do not stain the front of this because it will smear when it gets wet. I'm also going to stain my tumbling tower block. Now we're going to take our Mod Podge and we're going to put it on the side that is not stained. Again, if you stain this and then put Mod Podge, it could seep through your paper. We're going to apply our paper to this, making sure that it's smooth and we get out all of our wrinkles and bubbles. Then once we do that, I'm going to use a sanding block and you just kind of sand down on these edges and it takes off any overhang that you may have. Y'all, this is so much better than cutting. It looks so much nicer. Then we're going to use our distressing ink and our dauber and go around those edges and blend it in. I love how nice this makes it look. The last thing we're going to do is take our tumbling tower block and glue it to the back in the middle at the bottom. And when you do that, this project's finished. For our last project, we're going to use one of these mini terracotta pots that you get from the Dollar Tree. This one has some chips in the top of it, but I think it just gives it character. Some Waverly chalk paint in white, some florals that I had left over from last year, a pencil, this word bloom that I printed off on the computer, and a black permanent marker. So the first thing I'm going to do is use my Waverly white chalk paint and my chippy brush and I'm going to give this a heavy distressed painting. I did not want it to be solid. I want it to look like old pottery. So we're just going to go over it really well and leave it to dry. Once it's dry, I'm going to take my word, flip it over and scribble on the back of it with a pencil. Then I put it on my pot where I want it to go and trace over it. And this is going to trace my letters onto my pot. Now you can do this freehand. This is a simple font, but I just wanted to make sure that I had the right dimensions. And that was why I did it this way. Now we're just going to take our permanent marker or black permanent marker and fill it in. Y'all, I think this turns out so cute. You can use any permanent marker. This one is one of the ones from Hobby Lobby, but you can use the jot markers from the Dollar Tree as well. Now we're just going to put our flowers in. You don't even have to glue them. Just stick them down in there. And once you get your flowers in, the project is finished.
Hey y'all, it's Kay. For this project, I'm going to be doing a B theme tier tray. I'm going to list all of the items I'm using up front. First of all, I'm going to use three of these wooden scraps. They are about three and a half inches by five and a half inches and under an inch thick. I'm going to use one of these styrofoam cones that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some jute rope, I got mine at Hobby Lobby. These beads that I got at Hobby Lobby when they were marked 75% off. One wooden tag, I got mine at Walmart. Some of this nylon cording. Some jute twine. A wooden birdhouse from the Dollar Tree. This scrapbook paper that I got from Hobby Lobby. This wooden frame that I got from the Dollar General when it was marked down to 50 cents. This market calendar that I got from the Dollar Tree. This watering can, it came from Hobby Lobby when it was 90% off last year. Two of these corn skewers, I got them from Walmart. This 7 8 inch round wooden dowel, you could also use the handle from a plunger from the Dollar Tree. This wooden mason jar sign, I got it from the Dollar Tree and it was 50% off after Christmas. Some poster letters from the Dollar Tree. These word stickers that I got from Hobby Lobby. These bright yellow ball mums that I got from Walmart. Some letter stickers, I ended up only using the black ones on the left top. Some of these B stickers, the ones on top came from Hobby Lobby, the ones at the bottom are by Creative Memories. Some wired ribbon, I did not use all of them. A few of these regular ribbons in various widths. Some black, white, and yellow chalk paint. Some black, yellow, and white acrylic paint. Some Mod Podge. A few of these tumbling tower blocks that I got at the Dollar Tree and I used them to prop things up higher on my tray. This is a sign that I just had in my collection. It came from Hobby Lobby last year when it was marked down. And finally, at the end of that long lengthy list, these two metal bees, one came from the Dollar General, one came from Hobby Lobby at different times. First thing I'm going to do is remove this twine from the mason jar. You can either reuse it later on another project, but I'm not going to use it here. And then I'm going to give it a good sanding and remove all of that glitter from the front and most of the picture as well. Then I'm coming to the back and I'm going to remove this sticker on the back, actually a couple of stickers, and they were stuck on there so well I ended up just having to scrape them off with my Cricut tool. And then I came back in and sanded it off so there would be no sticky residue. Now I'm going in with the yellow chalk paint and I'm going to paint all of the edges and what was the back will now be the front and I'll paint that as well. Then we'll just set it aside to dry. And once it's dry, I'm coming back in with acrylic paint and painting it in this much brighter yellow color. The same areas as before. And then for the back, I'm just going to take a piece of this craft paper and I'm going to trace around it. And then I'll cut that out just using my scissors. Then I'll use a little spray adhesive on the back here and then we'll cover up what used to be the front and you won't even know that it was a Christmas piece. Now I'm putting my poster letters on. Of course, we're spelling home. I'm going to line it up first at the bottom and get my M on and my E, and then I will use that to help align the other two letters. I wanted a big B to be my O and I couldn't find one, so I am going to use the poster letter O and then I'll just take the biggest B that I do have and put it right in the center of that O. That was the best solution I could come up with. And then I'm going to take this little scrap piece of ribbon that I had. That's all that was left on the roll. And I'll just pinch it in the middle and I'm going to make kind of a bow tie bow. And I'll just take a piece of this dotted grow, grow grain ribbon and I'm going to tie it right around the middle. 
and just apply it with a little hot glue right there to the left top of my little mason jar. And I'm going to take one of the smaller bees and put it in the center. I'll just put a little hot glue there and that'll dress up the center part as well. And I think that's very striking. I love how it came out. It is bright and cheerful and very beautiful. This project is going to be pretty simple. I'm going to take off this little hanger at the top first. I will replace it later. Then I'm going to remove this sticker off the back. I just put a little heat on it. And then I'm going to sand it really well on the front and the back. And then I'm going to give it a good coat of this cashew chalk paint by Waverly. It only took one coat. It gave great coverage. And I did the back there. And then I'm going to take this little honey sign that's on the back of the calendar. I'll just trim it up with my paper trimmer. You do not have to have one of those, of course. And it fit almost perfectly on the front there with just a little margin around it. I'm going to place a nice coating of Mod Podge, not too thick. I really did go back and remove some of this, guys, but I didn't want to bore you on camera with that. And then I'll just spritz the back of my picture with a little water and then place it down carefully on the block, lining it up and smoothing it down. I just use some wax paper so that I can move it around and not tear it. Then I'll replace that little picture holder at the top. And then I'm going to come in with some of my ribbons and I'm just going to tie a nice bow at the top. It did take me a couple of times on this one. And that's pretty much it. I think I'm going to place a daily scripture on the top of my little picture holder. The first thing I'm going to do for this project is take my wooden tag and give it about a coat and a half of white Waverly chalk paint on all the sides, edges, back and front. And as a bonus project, I'm going to take one of these wooden beads that has little grooves around it and one of these dowels, the smaller one that was in a pack at Walmart. And I'm going to cut off just a few inches because I'm going to be making a honey dipper. I'll just sharpen it in my little pencil sharpener and that just makes it easier to glue it on. I'll put a little hot glue on the end there and then stick it down into my bead. And then we have a honey dipper. I think that turned out cute. I'm going to make a tassel. I'm going to use my Cricut scraper. You can use a piece of cardboard or whatever you have on hand. And I'm going to wrap this twine around it about 20 times. Then I'm going to come in with some yellow ribbon and some black ribbons. And I'm going to wrap each of those around my Cricut tool about four times each because the ribbon is a lot wider than the twine, but it gives a lot of color and dimension to our tassel. Then I'm going to slip a piece of twine right behind all of my ribbon and twine that I have on my Cricut tool, and I'm going to tie a knot at the top. And then I'll just slide all of my ribbons off and line it up and evenly as I can. Come in with another piece of twine about a oh, half inch from the top and wrap it around several times and tie a really good knot. And then we'll just cut off the excess. And that's kind of how you make a tassel. And then you come in and you clip the ends of all the twine and all the ribbon and open it up. Sometimes you have to trim a bit off, make sure it's even and you play with it and fluff it and you get a really cute tassel. Now I'm going to work on that tag a little more. It's dry and I'm going to put on the word blessed here at the bottom. You could always write it in with a marker. I just wanted to use the sticker so I wanted to make this a quick and easy project. And then I'll put one of my bees at the top, attach it with a little hot glue to make sure it sticks and we have be blessed on our tag. I'm going to use some of this cording that I had and I'm going to use about a 36 inch piece, fold it in half, stick the loop through my tag and then pull 
my twine back through it. I call that a slip knot, but I'm not sure that's really right. I'm going to slide on one of my beads, and then I tried to mesh the two ends together because this nylon cording will melt nicely, but it didn't work too well, so I'm going to tie a knot right at the top of that bead, and then I will cut off one of the sides of this cording. I want my beads to be able to go down on the on the cording really well and not be so difficult. And then I just start placing my beads on in a pattern. I used almost all of the colors in the package and by the end I had used half of the package of beads. I could have painted some wooden beads but I thought these were just cute and that made the process a lot faster by having the beads already painted in the coordinating colors. These are actually plastic, but I didn't mind that at all. Then when I get to the end, I'm just going to tie that off, and at first I'm just leaving a loop here. And you could stop there and this whole thing would be complete. But I'm just going to take the end of the beads here, the little loop, and the loop from the tassel, and I'm going to tie a nice knot, tying the two pieces together, and just cut off the excess. And that's our beaded tassel. I love how this turned out. I think it's so cute. And here it is laying on my table. I do apologize for the lighting, but I hope you learned a little something. For this project, I'm going to be making a faux set of stacked books. I'm going to use these one by fours that I bought, which are really about three and a half inches wide. And I will paint one of them with white chalk paint, one of them with yellow chalk paint, and one of them with black chalk paint. And I will paint all of the edges, the both flat sides, front and back, you could call it, and give them a really good coverage. And then I'm going to glue them together. I'm going to have the black one on the bottom. I just picked the best sides to be my outside and then I'll place that yellow one right down there on top. So we have a yellow, white, and black stack. And then I just picked out some more of the words that I liked from these stickers. The first one says grateful, and I'm going to put that towards the end, but with a little margin on the end. And then I'm going to put loved, and smooth that one down. And you could always put Mod Podge on top of your stickers to make sure they stay on. And the last one says beautiful. And then I'm coming in with this beautiful ribbon that looks a lot like a honeycomb pattern. And I'm just going to cut off a piece and glue it right around my stack of books. And I had so many cobwebs y'all today with this glue gun. Cause I have used several sticks of glue today and I'm going to turn under my edge there so that it's nice and finished and I couldn't leave it alone so I'm going to place some of this black ribbon that is thin straight down the middle of it. I like lots of color in my projects and then we'll glue that there on the bottom. The next thing I'm going to do is place on some of the smaller flat bees that I had in these stickers and I'm just choosing three different ones and they're turned in two different directions and I'm going to put those right on my books right before the words and you could stop there but of course I just had to use this bumblebee ribbon I'm just going to make a simple bow making two loops on each side I just wrapped it around guys I didn't do anything special and I pinched it in the middle I'm going to use a little bit of that same black and white check ribbon and tie around it just in a knot. And then I'm going to cut off the excess, use a little hot glue. Well, of course you gotta fluff it first and cut off those ends, dovetail them and make them look cute. Then we'll glue it down to our book towards the back a little bit and it is a really big bow if that bothers you you could do something smaller but I wanted to use this ribbon and I'm going to take another one of those small B stickers not the flat ones but the raised ones and I'm just going to put it right there in the center of my bow 
and dress it up just a little bit more. And there's my set of faux mini stacked books. I love these so much. This is probably my favorite project in all of this. And if you don't like a big bow, well, just make it smaller or use some different ribbon. For this project, I'm just going to be painting this little birdhouse in our bee theme. And I know bees don't live in birdhouses, but I just had to have a birdhouse on there because I just love these little wooden birdhouses that you get at the Dollar Tree. After I gave my birdhouse a good coat of white Waverly chalk paint over the entire thing, I came back in with this yellow chalk paint and I'm going to paint I guess you'd say the body of the house. I'm just going to go around and paint all of the sides in the front in the yellow chalk paint. Then I came in with my black chalk paint and I'm going to paint the bottom edge. You'll see in just a minute when I flip this over. And I'm going to paint also the bottom of the entire birdhouse, which is kind of like the basis one with the black chalk paint as well. Then I'm just going to trace out my roof on this cute little bee scrapbook paper. I got it at Hobby Lobby recently. And I'm just going to cut out these little rectangles. Trace out the second one, do the same thing. Use a little Mod Podge, not too much because the paper is kind of thin. And then we'll apply our bee paper to the roof of our little birdhouse kind of like wallpaper. And of course, I had to add a couple of bees. I couldn't leave them off of the front. So I'm just going to attach them there, one to the front and one to the roof easement. And there's our finished piece. I love this one so much. So simple, so easy. I love these little watering cans and I got it when it was 90% off last year at Hobby Lobby, but it was a weird color and I'm going to go in or I did go in and paint it with two good coats of my white Waverly chalk paint. Here I am just touching it up a little bit because somehow I lost the first footage. Now I'm just going to make a very simple bow by wrapping it around my hand about four times. And I dropped one of the ribbons, so I had to go back and rearrange it. But that's basically what I did. And then I'm just going to use a black chenille stem, half of one actually. And I'm going to twist it right around the very middle of my little bow here. And we'll just give it a good twist. And we'll use the excess of that to attach it to the handle of our can. And of course, every bow needs a lot of fluffing. Pull out each of those loops and make it look good. Trim off the ends, cut them at a diagonal. And the more you work with it, well, the better it looks. Now I'm just going to twist it right around my can here. And I'll just trim up the ends of that chenille stem with my wire cutters. And I'm going to keep it really simple. I'm going to place the word joyful on one side. Again, using those stickers, you could write the word kind or whatever you would like on your project with a marker if you like. And I'm putting thankful on the second side. And of course, I'm going to add some bees. That is our theme today. I'm going to use some different ones than I used on my other projects. And that's pretty much it. That pretty much wraps up this project. You could do a lot more. You could paint it multicolored. But there it is sitting on my little pedestal. Looks a little funny for the ribbon from this angle, but it actually is quite charming. For this project, I'm going to be making one of the many rolling pins. I couldn't find any at my local store, so I bought this dowel at Walmart. It is 7 eighths inch around. And I'm just going to go in and paint it, first of all, with two coats of white Waverly chalk paint. I cut this dowel to about six and a half inches at first. I cut it on my four inch table saw that I got at Harbor Freight by just turning it when the blade started bogging down a little bit. Now I'm going to take my corn skewers. They happen to be the perfect color, so I'm not going to paint them. Also, they're kind of a rubbery finish. 
and I'm going to remove the pins from them. They would not stick down into my dowel. It was just too thick. And I'm just going to use hot glue to attach them to my dowel. And right as I was attaching the second one, I discovered that I had cut my dowel way too long. Six and a half inches is just too much. So I went back and I cut it again. I took out about an inch and a half. And so here is where it has been cut again. Honestly, you could probably do it at four inches and it would be just fine. And I'm going to put on the second side again with some hot glue. Then I'm taking these letters that I told you earlier I was going to use, and I'm going to put on the word kind. I'm going to start at the end so it lines up perfectly with the D and then work my way across. And then I'm going to use one of these bees, which is a little different than I had been using, and place one of those on because I need it to be flat because it's going on a rounded surface. And of course, you can always come back in with a little Mod Podge on top of your stickers to make sure they stay perfectly flush. Then I'm just taking a couple of my ribbons and I'm going to tie a simple shoestring bow here right on the end. And just cut off my ribbon. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. I love it so much, y'all. I think it's just cute as can be. And there it is on display. And no bee-themed tiered tray would be complete without a bee skeep. So I'm going to take my knife and cut off the top part of this cone and then... We'll simply start wrapping this twine around the cone. At first, you go kind of slow and get it nice and attached and don't melt too much of the cone, and you want to watch your way around. But after the second row, it actually goes pretty fast. I don't glue every bit of the string around. After I get past a certain point, I just glue it when I feel like it's necessary and then just kind of work my way around and keep it as tight as possible. I don't want any of that white showing through. And you know what? You could paint it before you did this and it probably would be even easier. And then I'll just twist it right up onto the top and keep going until I get it kind of rounded, make a little loop at the top. And that's pretty much all there is to it. Now I'm going to take a length of my twine and I'm going to glue it end to end and make a circle and then I'll glue it right down onto my bee skeep. We'll just place it right there on the cone. And then I'm going to come in with my Jot Permanent Marker and I'm going to color that in. You could also paint it as well if you don't get good coverage. That's just another option. And of course, you've got to have some bees or this project just would not be complete. And I'll also use one of them to hide where my rope met there. And we'll dress it up. And later I'm going to come back and add a flower to the top, but that's pretty much it. And it turned out just like I wanted it to. I cannot wait to add it to the tray and show you everything that I've made. Thank you for stopping by our channel today. If you are new here, we hope that you will subscribe by clicking on the little button below. Make sure you ring the bell so you will be notified every time we upload new content. We upload new videos each week offering a variety of DIYs, trash to treasure projects, and tips, tricks, and hacks. We just know you'll find something you like with Crafting Cousins. For this project, we're going to use three clothespins. I got mine from Dollar Tree, some chalk paint in white and crimson, and some acrylic paint in cobalt blue, an Arteza white gel pen, some wood glue, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. We're going to take three of our clothespins and take them apart. Once you get them apart, we're going to take five of those pieces and line them up side by side, trying to get our ridges as even as possible. Now we'll use some wood glue and some hot glue and glue these together. Make sure you get the excess out with your fingers because it doesn't want to paint well. 
and then once it's together we're going to paint it i'm going to start with my cobalt blue paint and i'm going to paint three of my clothes pins from the second ridge over to the side this is going to be the blue area of my flag now i'm going to use my waverly white chalk paint and i'm going to paint two of my clothes pins and this will be my stripes and then once i get those done we'll use our crimson chalk paint and we'll paint the other three now i did not bother to take mine off i just kind of took my time and tried to make sure it didn't bleed over i did make sure i got down in those little ridges really well and i did go over onto the sides and the top i like these ridges because it kind of makes it look like the flag is like blowing in the wind or something i love this effect once our paint is dry i took my arteza white gel pen and i made some little stars on there i just used the method we learned in kindergarten where you draw the triangles but you could use stickers for this you could use your cricut and if you don't have one of these white gel pens you could use a paint pen or a small paintbrush now we're going to take a tumbling tower block, use a little bit of hot glue, glue it to the bottom in the middle to make a stand, and with that, this project is finished. For this project, we're going to use one of the chunky stars from the Dollar Tree, some stars and striped scrapbook paper I got from Hobby Lobby, some pit berry vine, I think I got this from Hobby Lobby last year, and some Mod Podge. We're going to remove our hanger, we will not need that, and then I'm going to take that stars scrapbook paper and I'm going to trace two of my points of my star onto the back of it and cut that out. This will be for one half, and then I'm going to use the stripes scrapbook paper and I will trace the other three. Now I did mark my stars um, points that I was tracing onto the scrapbook paper because they are not even and it does matter how they lay. Now before I put my scrapbook paper on there I'm going to take one of those furniture repair markers. I get them from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to go around and stain the edges of my star and then I'll also stain the back. You could leave this natural wood. I just like the look of stained wood. Once I got it stained, I took my Mod Podge and I put it all over the top of my star and then I missed my paper. This just helps soften it up so that it will stick and I stick it down. Now you see that I overlapped this and I wanted it to look that way. I really like that look. Once my Mod Podge was dry, I took a sanding block and I just sand down around the edges and this is going to take off any excess paper that might be hanging over. Now I'm going to use a finger dauber and in that, um, in that stain stick that I had and we're just going to go around the edges of this and distress it. This just kind of helps blend it in and makes it where it doesn't look so cut and paste. Now I'm going to take that pitberry vine and I'm going to cut three pieces. I want to put it from side to side kind of at an angle just like I did my seam and I do want it to stack up so that it's red, white, and blue in each area. Now it did take some creative cutting to make this happen but if you just look at it you can figure it out. Once I got all of my pieces cut, it does kind of wrap around because it has some wire in it, but I also used some hot glue to glue it in place so that it would stay and not come off. Just be really careful not to burn yourself. Once you get this glued down, this project will be finished. Now, if you've been with us for any amount of time, you know that I love gnomes, and I really love making the little mini gnomes to sit on my tear trays. So for this one, we're going to use a baby sock. I got this from the Dollar Tree. I just stuff it with some stuffing out of an old pillow I got from the thrift store. Now, if you don't have an old pillow, you could use batting or pretty much anything you've got that's soft. You're gonna stuff your sock and then I take one of the tiny rubber bands, I also get these from the Dollar Tree and I'm gonna tie off the top of this. You do have to kind of pinch it around and mess with it to make it stand up and then I'm gonna trim off the top of my sock. 
Now I'm going to use some faux fur. I think I got this at Hobby Lobby a while back. You can get it at pretty much any craft store. And I cut it down to fit on the front of my sock. Then I'm just going to use some hot glue and glue it right down to that and we have a beard. For my gnome hat, I just googled gnome hat pattern and I found this little one and I printed it out and cut it out. And now I'm going to cut it out of a scrap piece of 4th of July fabric that I had. I've had this for several years in my stash, but you can get 4th of July fabric at Hobby Lobby, Joann's, even at Walmart. Once we get our hat cut out, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue on one side and then I will fold those together and press them down and voila, we have a little hat. I'll stick it down on top of my little gnome, pulling it down as tight as I can get it. I'll lift up the back and put some hot glue down and then press it down in there and that's going to hold this in place. To make the nose for my gnome, I love to use these little footy stockings that I get from the Dollar Tree. I cut a piece off and I use some of my filler and stuff in there and then just kind of twist it up, take another little rubber band and wrap around it and that's going to hold this in place. Now I'm going to cut off the excess and I have a nose. We'll use some hot glue and then glue it right there, right under the lip of our hat. And I do use a little more hot glue just to kind of glue my hat down and make sure that it's going to stay in place. Now I like for my hats to flop over. You don't have to do this. So I use a little bit of hot glue and glue it down and then I'm also going to glue one of these star stickers onto it and with that this project is finished. For this project, I'm going to use a pack of these wooden dice that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'll use some chalk paint in white and crimson and some acrylic paint in cobalt blue. And I'm also going to use some of these rub-on transfers that you get from the Dollar Tree. I like these black letters and the gold ones. So first we are going to paint our blocks. I paint one of them with my white Waverly chalk paint. The other one I'm going to paint with my crimson Waverly chalk paint. And for the last one, I'm going to use my acrylic cobalt blue paint. We'll give them all one coat and set them aside to dry. Now I'm going to take those rub-on transfers and I'm going to cut out the U, the S, and the A. You do have to be kind of careful because they're really close together. To apply these, all you do is take the backing off, lay it down, and then rub across it with something flat. It doesn't matter what you use. Now on this one, pay attention. I put it down. It wasn't where I wanted it and I tried to move it and part of it had already stuck. I was afraid this was going to be an issue, but I fixed it the best way I knew how. I just kind of put it back down and scraped it off. Then I used a pencil and one of my ink pens and kind of filled it in. And I think it looks okay. It's a little off center, but we'll work on that in just a bit. Now I'm going to put my U down the same way, put it where you want it, then scrape it with something flat, lift it up, and there it is. Now I'm going to take some of those gold rub-on transfers. I cut out this little fireworks starburst and I also cut out some of the little stars. I'm going to take that fireworks starburst and put it down there kind of in the corner and rub it in. And I think that kind of helps that it's not where it's supposed to be. It kind of pulls the eye away. Then I took some of the little stars and I'm going to decorate onto my blocks. You put as much or as little as you would like, but once you get these on, this project will be finished. For this project, I'm going to use one of the little terracotta pots that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use some scrap fabric that I had on hand that I had left from another project that I did this season. For the striped fabric, I think I got it at Joann's. I cut it down to fit onto my pot and then I also cut it into strips. Now I really should have cut this piece into two strips. I was trying to do it two and two and it was still just a little too big because your pot gets smaller as it goes down so you need to compensate for that. Now once I cut it into individual stripes it seemed to work a lot better. You're just going to put down some Mod Podge, stick your fabric down, wrap it around and then seal it off at the end and trim it. For that top part I'm going to use this star fabric. I got this from Hobby Lobby. 
we are going to put our Mod Podge down and then stick it down. Now, I wanted that finished edge to kind of go off the side of this to cover that unfinished edge on the other fabric. And you also have that little lip. So I used some hot glue and glued it down around the bottom of that lip. Then I pull it back and I use some Mod Podge around it and pull the fabric back up and stick it down. This is going to hold it in place. Now to finish it up, I'm gonna use a little bit of hot glue to seal it and then I'll go Go around the inside and put down a little bit of my Mod Podge and fold my fabric over down into it and we're going to let this dry. Once it is completely dry, I'm going to take some leftover floral foam. I have this from other projects. I stick it down in there and then I take some little white flowers, some little lavender, and some little reddish looking flowers that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to kind of fill it up. I even stuck some of this baby's breath in there. Just something kind of fresh for summer and gives you the idea of the red, white, and blue. Now we'll take a little bit of Spanish moss and I'm going to fill in around the bottom. And then I thought to give it a little more 4th of July, I would take some of this foam scatter that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use a skewer and cut it into pieces and stick it up into my stars and I'll put those down in my arrangement. Now you could see the wood, so I decided to stain it. I thought it looked better, but that is just personal preference. You can if you want to, you don't have to. But once you get your stars in to your arrangement, this project will be finished. For this project, I'm going to use this 7 8 inch wooden dowel. I got it from Hobby Lobby. It was $2.99, but every other week they have them for 40% off. I'm also going to use my 4 inch Mighty Mite table saw that I got from Harbor Freight. Now, if you don't have one of these little table saws, you could use a hand saw to cut this as well. I marked the first part according to my tear tray. I didn't want it to be too big for it. I cut that off, then I use that piece and I mark a piece that's a little bit smaller, cut that and then do that one more time. I want these to be in varying heights. Now it does kind of splinter your edges, so I'm going to use my sanding block and just go around these edges and smooth them out and take off any kind of um, extras that they have hanging over there. Now I'm going to take an awl, I got this from Hobby Lobby, and I'm just going to punch a hole in the top of each one of my wooden dowel pieces. To decorate these, I'm going to take a napkin, I got this from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to cut off one of those four pieces, and then I'll take the backing off of it to make it one ply. For my longest dowel, I want to wrap it in the stripes part of this. So I'm going to cut off a piece and then I'll put some Mod Podge onto my dowel. I stick my napkin down in there and now we're just going to go all the way around. We'll add Mod Podge and pull our napkin around, smoothing it out as much as possible. Once you get to the other side, you can trim this off and then I'll just use a little more Mod Podge to seal that seam. Now I'm going to take my lighter and I'm going to burn off the excess napkin. I like how it leaves it looking burned because to me it really looks like a firecracker. Now I'll use my lighter and I'm going to torch the top of my firecracker and give it that burned look. I love how this looks y'all. For the next to the tallest one, I'm going to use the stars part of this, and I'm going to do the same thing. We'll just put some Mod Podge down, we'll wrap our napkin around, and then we'll finish it up. Make sure that you're careful with this because it's really thin. I'm going to trim it off, and then I will use my lighter, and I'll singe off the excess napkin, and then I'm also going to singe the top. For my smallest one, I'm going to use a piece of this patriotic fabric that I had left over and I just kind of cut it down because you can't burn this like you do the napkin. But I do use Mod Podge and I put a little bit down, stick my fabric in and then just go around just like we did with the napkin. We're going to trim it off and then seal it up with a little more Mod Podge. Now I am going to take my lighter and I'm going to torch the top of this just like I did the other one so they all look alike. I'm going to use one of these chenille stems I got from the Dollar Tree. I wrap it around a pencil a couple of times and then cut it off and this is going to be my fuse. I'll use a little bit of hot glue and stick it right down into that hole that we punched with our awl. 
Now I'm going to take my three little firecrackers and I'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue them together so that they will be a set. I took some twine. I got this from the Dollar Tree as well. I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue in the center and then wrap it around a couple times and trim it off. And I'll use one of these little wooden stars that came from the Dollar Tree in the middle. Now I'm going to paint it with some white Waverly chalk paint. And with that, this project will be finished. For this project, I'm going to use this little mason jar that I got from the Dollar Tree, some letter stamps, I got these from Pop Shelf, some glitter stickers from Hobby Lobby, and some white chalk paint. Now, getting the leaves and the flowers off this mason jar was quite the job. They did not want to come off, y'all. I used my heat gun and this little tool that I had, and I just kept heating it up and scraping it until I finally got it off. Then I used my sanding block and went over to smooth it out and take off as much writing as I could. And now I'm going to take my white Waverly chalk paint and I'm going to paint the front and the back of this. I like for my backs of my projects to be finished and let it dry. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in mineral and I'm going to paint just the top of this. This is where the lid of my mason jar would be and I did paint it all the way around and on the edges as well. Once that was dry, I took some acrylic paint, it's called Silver Metallic, and I went around and painted it and let it dry, and this gave it more of the look of the real canning lid. Now, if you put this on without putting the mineral down, you cannot see it. Once that's dry, I'm going to use a pencil and just sketch some little lines across there to give it that lid look. And now I get to play. I'm going to take my little stamps. I love this little whimsical font. And I'm going to stamp out happy. And I wasn't worried if it was even because this is going to be more whimsical. I'm going to cut the four off of one of those rub-in transfers. And I lay it there. And then I stamp TH. And now I'm going to spell out y'all. Y-A-L-L. -L. Now these little stamps do not have the little colon mark. So I used a pen and made that myself and filled it in. And then I'm going to take the back off my four, lay it in place, and scrape it off so that it's going to stick down. Now that we have that, I'm going to use some of these glittery star stickers from Hobby Lobby to decorate. And once you get those on, this project is finished. Now y'all know this would not be a Crafting Cousins tear tray without a bead garland. I'm going to use some red and white beads. I got these in a pack from Walmart at Christmas. And then I'm going to take some natural beads and I'm going to put some of my cobalt blue paint into a little baggie with my beads. You're just going to close it up and then squish it around. This is going to paint your beads. It's such an easy way to do it. But just make sure once you take them out, you let them completely dry and that there's not any paint in the holes because I made that mistake. Learn from me. While that is drying, I'm going to take this wooden star I got from Dollar Tree in a pack and I'm going to paint it with my cobalt blue acrylic paint on the front, the back, and the sides and then we'll lay that aside to dry. Now I'm going to take some white chalk paint and I'm going to paint my little United States wooden piece that I got from Hobby Lobby. It's 39 cent at the back in the unfinished wood section and I'll paint the front, the back, and the sides of it as well. Once that paint is dry, I'm going to take another piece of our napkin and I'm just going to put down some Mod Podge and I'll put my napkin over it. I want to make sure I get some of the blue and some of the stripes across it. Then we will just trim around it with our scissors and now the magic. We take our lighter, hit it to the edge and it is going to burn all around this and give you those perfect edges. I want to use one of these little rub-on transfers. These are the gold patriotic ones. I cut out America. I lay it across my little United States piece. And then you're just going to rub over it with something flat. And then once you lift it, it's going to be transferred onto your piece. I love these little rub-on transfers. I'm going to use a hole punch and punch a hole in this. And now it is ready. 
for the star i'm going to take the piece on here it's actually part of the constitution i loved how it looked i cut it out and i cut out a little firework starburst we will take the back off lay it in place and then rub it with something flat and this is going to transfer it over to our star if you see it didn't all come off just lay it back down and rub over it some more now we're going to put our little starburst up there at the top just to kind of balance this out and we'll punch a hole in it as well now let's put this all together. I like to use a large darning needle. It has a large eye and I can put my twine through there. Then it makes it easy to thread my beads on. I'm gonna do a pattern of red, white, and blue. I used 10 red beads, nine white, and nine blue because I wanted to begin and end with red. Now I am going to take my twine and I run it through my United States piece and I'm going to tie a triple knot into it and this is going to hold it on. We'll trim that off, push everything down, and then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to run it through the hole in my star and tie a triple knot, trim it off, and with that, this project will be finished. Let's go put our tray together. Hey y'all, it's Kay. For today's project, I'm going to be working on my watermelon themed tiered tray. I'm going to be doing five projects today and three at a later time. I'm going to be using, first of all, one of these mini rolling pins that I got at TJ Maxx in a pack of four for $7.99. One of these wood rounds that I got at Walmart for 97 cents, it is seven inches diameter three scrap pieces of wood that are one by three. I just took them from my husband's stash. A wooden birdhouse from the Dollar Tree. Some wood beads and a wooden tag. Some white Waverly chalk paint and also some Mod Podge. Some white acrylic paint. Some pink acrylic paint in Carmine, Fuchsia, and also this pale pink. Three colors of acrylic paint one in a darker green and two in brighter green. I'm going to be using some of this paper from Echo Park and I will also be using some of the stickers that are in this package. Some of this scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. These three watermelon buttons that I got at Hobby Lobby. Various ribbons in shades of green and also in shades of pink and these two ribbons as well. And the first thing I did was paint everything that was raw wood with a nice base coat of my white Waverly chalk paint. I'm just using this color for a primer for all of my pieces. Even the beads got a coat of paint. The first thing I'm going to do is draw a line using my ruler right down the center of my wood piece. And then I'll take one of the halves and divide it in half again. Then I'm just going to use my little four inch table saw that I got at Harbor Freight. And I'm going to carefully cut my circle in half and then I'll cut one of the pieces that in half again. And now I'm going to give it a good sanding on the rough edges. And finally, I'll come back and touch it up with my white Waverly chalk paint, all the raw edges. I took a pencil and I drew a line, oh, about half inch to three quarters in. I didn't really measure it. I just eyeballed what I thought looked best. And I'm coming in with the bright green and I'm going to paint the edge of my pieces. And then I will paint that small edge as well that I drew in with my bright green paint. And then I come back with the pink paint and I'm going to paint the actual part of the watermelon slice. I thought it would be fun to make our own watermelon pieces to go on the tray. And then I do paint the edging here with the pink. Start on my smaller slice now and give it a good coat. I did have to come back and touch this up by the way. It took about a coat and a half to get really good color. Now I'm going in with the darker green paint and I'm just going to put some squiggly lines on the green 
just to be more representative of what a watermelon actually looks like. I don't know about you, but watermelon is my favorite summer fruit, and I just don't think it's summer unless I've had at least a couple of pieces. So my idea to put in the white was to use a paint pen and put dots a good size all the way around the edging between the pink and the green so that you get it looking more like a watermelon, right? Well, I bought the wrong kind of paint pen. I had heard that these Sharpie markers were great to use. I did not have good luck with them, so I'm not recommending them to you. But I did eventually get the job done. I did have some cleanup because my marker ran. And of course, it gave me lots of problems, so I'm going to be looking for a different marker. Then I used my Master's Touch marker in the brush stroke to paint in my seeds. Now I'm going to make a bow for this project. I'm going to cut several four inch pieces of ribbon, all of the items that I can find in the colors I like. And I do go back by the way in a moment and add another piece of black because it looked better with an X on the back for the black ribbon because the black ribbon is the wider ribbon and it's my anchor piece. So now I'm tying it together with another piece of pink in the middle. Then I'm just gonna fluff it out, give it a good haircut, making sure the ends are tapered and they're all about the same length. And then I'm just going to take a little hot glue and attach it right there to the corner of my melon. Now to make sure it stands on my tray, I'm going to use some of these tumbling tower blocks that I got from the Dollar Tree. And I'm just going to stack one on top of the other on the back here on the smaller piece of watermelon as well. And with the two pieces, it will serve as a stand and my watermelon will stand up nicely on my tray. I'm really happy with this project. It turned out exactly how I envisioned it. I was really excited when I found these small rolling pins at TJ Maxx at such a good price. So I thought, you know what? I don't have to use a dowel this time. I will just use these pre-made rolling pins because they're such a good bargain. So for the middle, I'm going to use my bright pink paint and I'm just going to coat the entire middle and then I'm going to lay it aside to dry. And then I'm coming in and I'm going to paint both ends in the green, this bright lime green I had decided I would use painter's tape, but it didn't work very well because it bunched up on a round surface. So I just ended up drawing my lines by the way with a pencil and I just took my time and filled in my colors. At the top of the sticker sheet, I saw that it said summer fun and I decided I would cut that out and make it my own sticker to put on my rolling pen. I was going to write it in with my paint pen, but you'll see a little later, I had a lot of trouble with my paint pen and I couldn't do it that way. Then I took my Jot Permanent Marker and I just started drawing some watermelon seeds all around my rolling pen. They aren't all the same size, they aren't all perfect, but I think it gives a nice effect. Now I'm going to take several of my ribbons and I'm just going to cut about 12 inch pieces in various colors. And at first I start stacking them on one on top of the other, but later I decide to do something different. I used my bow dabra to hold my ribbon and I'm just going to make little bows on top of each other and just stack them. And once I get them like I want them, I'm just going to take a piece of that pink ribbon once again and tie around the bunch. And I'm just making sort of a messy bow, just my rendition of one. And once I get it like I want it, I'm just going to attach it to the side of my rolling pin with a little hot glue and we'll just dress that right up. And there's my finished piece. I think it turned out so cute. I am going to enjoy this tray so much. For my stacked books, one of them was a lot shorter than the other two. The longest one is about six and a half inches of these one by three boards, but I decided I would use them just the size they are because my husband's out of town and couldn't cut them for me. So I'm painting the top one in the really bright pink and I'm painting the bottom one in the green and the one in the middle will be white. So I will just come back and paint the spine in the acrylic paint. 
but I just make sure to paint the edges that would look like a real book. Now I'm going to start putting my stacked books together. I'm of course going to put the nicest sides out because this is raw wood under this paint. And I'm going to put the pink on top and I'll just glue that down with some hot glue, making sure it's nice and centered. And then I'm going to take the two books and then glue them down to the green one. I found this sticker here in this package that says every summer has a story and I thought that was real appropriate. You could also write it on your books if you don't have a sticker. And I had some markers but I just really like the looks of it. So I'm going to put every summer on the white book and has a story on the green one. To dress up the pink book I'm going to take one of these watermelon buttons. I got these at Hobby Lobby back in the paper department. I will take my wire cutters and cut off the shank on the back so that we can glue it down flat to the book. But I noticed the color kind of clashed, so I got out my pink paint and I just give it a nice coat there. And that made everything match nicely. And I'll just use a hot glue and attach it right there to the top on the right end of the pink book. Now I'm going to dress it up with some ribbon. I really love this pink and white and green that I found at Hobby Lobby. It's about an inch wide. And I'm just gluing it down on the bottom there. And I'm going to fashion a little bow to put right on top. I'm just doing a very simple four loop bow, two on each side, pinching it in the middle. And I'm just going to cut it off at the length I think I need it to be. And then I'm going to take some of this pink thinner ribbon and I'm going to tie it right around the middle. I'll just pull it nice and snug and then we'll just cut off the excess. Then I decided I would cut my ribbon at an angle, just trimming up those ends just to make it look nice. And you could also burn the ends if it starts to fray. And then I'll just put a little hot glue right on top of the books and glue down our bow. And there's our finished piece. I just love this one so much. I love having mini stack books for all of my tiered trays. I wanted to paint these blue beads that I had in a green color to go on my beaded tassel. But once I got them painted, they really didn't look much different from the green ones I already had. So I went in and repainted them in the darker green paint. And then I'm taking my tag, the little wooden tag. I'm going to trace it around on this small piece of scrapbook paper because the wood had like these little tiny holes in it. So it needed to be covered after all. So I just grabbed some of my scraps, drew around it, and then I'm taking Mod Podge, I'm going to spread it out evenly, and then I'll place down my scrapbook paper onto the tag. I left the back just painted white. I spritzed it with a little water so that it would be a little more pliable because it is really thick paper, and then I'm just going to smooth it down onto my tag. I will come back later and punch out the hole at the top using my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch. And once it's dry, I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge on the outside as well, just to seal it nicely. Then I'm going to take one of my little watermelon buttons and I'm going to cut the shank off the back of it. But before I glue it down, I'm going to pick out one of these stickers on this paper. It says Sweet Summertime, and I'm going to place that onto my tag. I needed to trim it off a little bit because it was just a little too wide and I didn't like the edges that were cut at an angle. So now I'll just center it here at the bottom. I eventually figured out which way I wanted it to go. And then I'll just attach my button at the top with a little hot glue in the corner. And of course, I needed to paint some of my beads in the brighter pink colors. I actually used both shades of pink, but by the time you got them on the tassel, you couldn't even tell that there was a difference in the color. But I did paint two full skewers, which is about six beads in the pink. Now I'm going to make a tassel to go on 
our beaded tassel. I'm going to use my little Cricut scraper and I just cut about 12 inches of twine first of all and lay it across my scraper and that's how I'm going to tie the top of my tassel here in a few moments but I'm going to run it around my card about 20 times. Once I have about 20 rounds of twine on my scraper here, I'll just cut off the end and then I'm going to go in and add some ribbon. I'm just adding one round of each ribbon that I chose to use on here. And just cut each color as I go. And then I'm going to pull that piece of twine that we left across our scraper I'm going to pull it tight at the top and I'm going to put two good knots to hold our tassel together. And once I have it all together, I'm going to slide it off of my scraper, trim up the edges, kind of even it out, and then I'm going to tie a piece of twine just a little ways down from the top of my tassel. And before I finish tying it tight, I'm going to tie in one of those button pieces of watermelon just to make a nice accent. We'll just cut off the excess string, fluff out our tassel, give it another haircut, just so everything is nice and even and fluffed out. And then I just couldn't leave it alone. You knew I had to come in with some pink paint and paint that button so that it matches all of my ribbon. And now it's time to string on all of the beads. I just do a simple pattern. I'm using a hot pink and a white, and then the darker green, then the light pink, and then the lighter green, and then back to the pink. I have the buttons separated, as you might notice, some on the outside, because there really are two different dark pinks. And then we'll just tie on our tassel here at the end. Get it nice and snug and cut off the excess, slide down the beads so everything's nice and tight. And now we just need to cut off our end and tie on our tag. And I'll cut off that excess as well. I'm just going to twist it around a couple of times so I have a nice knot there at the end to hold it together. And there's our finished piece. And there it is displayed on my shelf. I love how these colors came together, y'all. So you may have noticed when I was painting this little birdhouse, I actually cut off the little stem that sticks out for the bird to sit on because I want this to be a miniature fruit stand because it reminds me of my grandfather's fruit stand when I was a little girl. He grew watermelons and he sold them on this little roadside stand. And so this is not going to be a birdhouse to me. It's just going to be a fruit stand. The first thing I'm going to do is paint the roof. And I do end up painting the base as well in this fuchsia pink paint. Although I am going to cover the roof later, I wanted to go ahead and give it a base coat of the pink because I have to paint the eaves as well. And now I'm going to trace it out on my watermelon scrapbook paper just tracing around the edges of the roof line. And then I'm going to come in and cut that out. And we'll cut out a second piece as well. And I'm gonna set that aside for just a few minutes. And I'm going to start painting the sides of my birdhouse. I'm going to paint them in this bright green color. I go in with a small brush first and therefore I don't have to use any painter's tape. I just take my time and get around the edges and then come in with my larger brush. And eventually I get all four sides of the birdhouse painted. This is just acrylic paint. Now I'm going to take Mod Podge and apply a nice even coat to the roof, place down our scrapbook paper on each side. And I think that just dresses it up a little bit and once it's dry we'll put a top coat on as well. Now I'm going to take this sticker I found on this Echo Park sheet that I showed you earlier. 
it says sweet summertime and I'm going to put it on the side of the birdhouse there. And I had an afterthought and I'll have to come back later and do this, but I'm going to write on the side of the house watermelon five cents to make it look more like a fruit stand. And there it is. And there it is on my small tear tray. On Monday, I started a watermelon themed tiered tray. Today, I'm continuing the last three projects to go with my tiered tray. If you missed Monday, you might want to go back and check it out. The first item I'm using today is this small watering can. I got it at Hobby Lobby at the end of the season last year, and it was 90% off. I'm also going to be using one of these picture holders that I got at the Dollar General, and I think it was 50% off when I got mine. If they don't have one, you can always buy those hooks at Hobby Lobby in the wedding section and make your own with a block of wood. I'm also going to be using one of these melamine plates that I got at Hobby Lobby, and it was 50% off. A small piece of this scrapbook paper by Echo Park. It is from their collection, Summer Fun. A couple of these watermelon stickers. Three of these smaller wooden beads. I got them last year at Christmas at Hobby Lobby. Some white Waverly chalk paint. Some acrylic paints in white and pink and green. One of these stickers from Echo Park. Some of these assorted ribbons in pink and green. I will also be using some Mod Podge and this sticker that I made on my Cricut. It says Sweet Summertime. You could also use stickers that you get from Hobby Lobby in a package. The first thing I'm going to do is remove this little picture holder at the top. I'm just using my wire cutters and I'm just going to try and pry it off. I've done this before and they eventually come out. And I was really surprised the other day to see that those little rings are sold now at Hobby Lobby. And then I'm using my heat gun to remove the price sticker on the back. For some reason, it was being a little bit difficult. And then I'm going in with my sanding block and I'm going to sand all sides of this little block. I will almost totally remove this sticker here on the front. And then I'm going to use some Waverly white chalk paint and cover this entire block. This will be just my first coat as a primer. And then I'm going to prime the little watering can as well. I'm not going to paint the inside or the bottom. I will just paint right up to the edge. And this again will just be my primer coat. Now I'm going to paint my beads. I started out painting one white, but I end up not needing it. Then I'm going to go in and paint one in the lime green, one in the Kelly green, and one in the really nice pink. These I'm going to use on my little frame. I always just put mine on a little skewer from the Dollar Tree, and that seems to be the best and easiest way to paint them. Once the light green one is dry, I just come back with a tiny paintbrush and kind of paint stripes on this bead like a watermelon, and it did look really cute. I'm sorry, it's so tiny it's hard to see on camera. And for the pink one, I'm going to use my Master's Touch marker and draw little tiny seeds all around the sides of the bead. This one also looks really cute in person. I'm going to use my paper trimmer and I'm going to cut my scrapbook paper at three and a quarter inches by three and a quarter inches because the little block frame is three and a half by three and a half. You could also just use a ruler and cut it with your scissors. I'm going to use this sticker that says say hello to summer and I'm just going to have to trim around it and make it more in the oval shape so that it goes well with my watermelon paper. So I'm just using my Tim Holtz scissors and that trims it up nicely. And then I'll just place it right in the middle of my little square here and smooth that down. And then I'm going to use a little Mod Podge and spread it evenly here on my wooden block. Then once I get it even, I'm going to spritz the back of my paper because it's very thick with just a tiny bit of water, and then we'll smooth it down onto the block and let it dry. I'm going to put my beads back on my little picture holder, 
and just push them right down in that hole. You could also add a little glue to hold it snugly. And now I'm going to put some Mod Podge on top to seal this well. I like to use these wooden blocks to put a scripture on every day or a picture of someone that I'm currently praying for. I take a couple of pieces of this rick rack and I cut it about 14 inches long and then I'm just going to tie it around at the base of my picture holder. Now I'm just going to go in and paint the little spout part of my watering can in the beautiful pink paint that I've been using on all of these projects and I will also come in and paint the handle as well. I'm not doing a whole lot to this watering can. And I'm going to take about 14 inches of each of these ribbons and I'm just going to tie a bow right on the handle to dress that area up. Then I'll go in with a couple of these watermelon stickers and place one on each side. And this project is pretty much complete. I'm just going to remove the backing from this sticker I made. In retrospect, white probably would have been a better color, but at the time I wanted to use the green. So that's what I'm going with. And then once I get that removed, I just center it right there in the center of my plate and just smooth it down, use my scraper on it a little bit, and then I'll just remove this clear covering. I'm going to make a little bow to go at the top. I'm cutting five inch pieces of ribbon and just crisscrossing them. You've seen me do this a lot, I'm sure. But I'm just doing a little messy bow at the top. Using several of my ribbons and then I'll take this piece of pink and tie it right around the center. And we'll just cinch that up and start fluffing our bow. I'm pulling the pieces out to the side and then I'm going to come back and trim it up as well. Cutting everything at an angle and making sure they're about the same distance across. Using a little hot glue, I'm going to attach it right to the top of my plate. And with that, our project is pretty much complete. This was just a little simple plate but a lot cheaper because I only had about 75 cents in the plate and maybe a quarter's worth of ribbon and that I purchased at the grocery store. Happy summer, y'all. I'm going to try and go through these items really quickly. I had these beads and this little garland from the Dollar Tree and this wooden nautical anchor. This little wooden birdhouse also from the Dollar Tree some wood pieces that I rescued from my neighbor's trash. This cute sign that I got from the Dollar Tree is really thick and a nice quality wood. This house shape that I got from the Dollar Tree. One wee yogurt jar that I also rescued from the trash. This little jar of shells that I got from the Dollar Tree. This small block of wood that I brought all the way to New Mexico from Alabama. This picture holder that I got at the Dollar General when it was marked 50% off. This cute metal sign from the Dollar Tree. Some ribbon from my stash. A small piece of burlap fabric. Some stickers from the Dollar Tree. Even some glass stickers. This cute stencil from the Dollar Tree. One of these napkins from the Dollar Tree, which I love. This cute cotton twine from the Dollar Tree is actually macrame cord. Some tumbling tower blocks. Some wooden beads and shells. Of course, gotta have some jute twine. Some acrylic paint in the color sun-kissed peach. Some chalk paint in the colors white, glacier, and nautical blue. Some antiquing wax. I'm going to use this wallpaper from the Dollar Tree. It is self-sticking. And of course, y'all know I'm going to use lots of hot glue and Mod Podge. The first thing I'm going to do for my projects is I'm going to take a baby wipe and that antiquing wax, and I'm going to stain the edges of my wood that are going to be the pages for my stacked books. When I start a tiered tray, I plan out my project and I decide what's the majority of the color going to be. And in this case, it's going to be the white by Waverly. And I just start painting all of the 
pieces that I want to be white or anywhere that I need the background to be white and work as my primer. And so this project took on quite a bit of painting. The pieces of wood for my stack books are 1x4 and 2x4 and they are 5.5 inches long. This is the piece that is going to be the bottom book and so I'm going to make sure that I paint the pieces that are actually going to show the spine and the bottom. The 2x4 piece I already painted white when I did all of my white painting and that's going to be the middle section of the books. I just thought it would give it a little more interest to have different widths of books because most of the books in my house are not uniform in size either. The last one I'm going to paint in the peach colored paint and it will require two really good coats and I'm going to paint all of the areas that will show and I'm going to of course put the best piece towards the top. Now we're just going to start assembling it. I'm going to place some hot glue here on top, a generous amount. Then I'm going to place on my middle book and then I'm going to place the peach one right on top. You could also use wood glue but I find that the hot glue holds just as well. Now I'm taking that glass sticker that I got at the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut it apart to use it as the titles for my book. You could write your words on, you could use sticker letters. If you have a Cricut, you could even use that. But I love the quality of these and I just thought they were really cute and colorful. So I'm going to put Wander on the first book and By the Sea on the second book and finally on the third one to find me. I'm going to use this ribbon I got from Hobby Lobby and I'm going to cut a piece that will go all the way around my books and then I'm just going to secure it with a little hot glue making sure that I keep it kind of even and I also fold down that edge so it's nice and finished. And there's what it looks like so far. The next thing I'm going to do is just make a really simple four loop bow to go on top. I'm just twisting it in my hands and twisting my ribbon back and forth and just allowing my tails to be slightly longer than my loops. I'm going to use my twine and tie it around the middle. Once I get it nice and tight, then I'm going to wrap it around several more times to secure it. And then we'll trim up our ends and make it look exactly like we want to to go on top of the books. Now I'm just using some hot glue to secure it down to my ribbon. I'm going to also place on this shell because I don't want it moving around. I want it to be part of the decor. And there we have it. For this glass yogurt jar, I'm going to make sure it's nice and clean, remove all the labels and also the sticky residue on the outside. And once it's dry, I'm going to measure for a piece of burlap to go around the outside of the jar. I just remove one of the strings and that gives me an easy way to cut it nice and straight across. And I also remove several strings along the edges on all four sides, if you will, just to give it that raveled effect. Then the next thing I'm going to do is take out my Mod Podge and pour some into a container. And then I'm going to take my chalk paint in the color Glacier and I'm going to give a nice little amount because I want it to be still a blue color. And then I just stir it really well. And then I'm going to start painting it onto my jar until I have the entire thing covered. When it dries, it will be lighter than it shows here on camera. I wanted it to have a sea glass effect. At least that's the look I was going for. And once it's dry, we're going to place on our burlap. I'm just going to ravel out a few more strands and then I'll just attach it right around the middle with some hot glue, folding in the edges so that it's nice and finished. And now I'm taking some twine and I'm going to twist it several times around the center and then tie it in a nice knot. Then we'll just attach this shell right in the center to cover our knot, again using some hot glue. And then once I get that like I want it, I'm going to tie some knots in the ends of my twine here. And then I'll just trim it off so it's not hanging down too far. And then we'll place in our candle and that's pretty much it for this project. Sweet and simple. One of my favorite parts of a tiered tray is the beaded tassel. Well, this one I needed some special colored beads, so I'm going to paint six beads 
in the blue glacier color and then I'm going to paint six in the peach color and then I will have 12 white ones and 12 natural colored beads. I just poke them down in some styrofoam with a little skewer and paint them that way, but you could also put them in a plastic bag. I do that if I have a lot at a time. Now let's make that tassel. I'm going to take some jute twine and run it around this Cricut tool, oh, about 15 times, 20 times, it doesn't really matter. And then once you get it where you want it there, just cut that off. Then I'm going to come in with my macrame cording and I'm going to run it around, oh, about eight times and then we'll cut that off. And then I'll need to slip it off of this tool and I had it a little tight, but it's okay, it came off. And now I'm going to tie a piece of jute at the top, give it several hard knots. And then once I pull that out, I'm going to place another piece right below the knot. So that gives us our little bump at the top. I wrapped it around several times and tied several good knots. Then I'm going to cut off the bottom here and trim it up, get it nice and even and like I want it. And now I'm going to take a shell and put it right over the knot and that just dresses it up a little bit more. And now I'm tying it onto some more twine so that we can string on our beads. And this is the longest part of this whole process was putting on the beads. I'm going to use a natural bead and then a white bead and then a blue bead, and then I'll do a natural bead, a white bead, and a peach bead. And so then I'll just work those two patterns throughout the piece, because I had 12 of the natural colored beads, 12 of the white beads, and of course, six blue beads and six peach colored beads. But of course, the size of your beads will dictate how many beads you actually use when you make your beaded tassel. Mine were kind of small, that's why I needed so many. Now that I've finished, I'm going to attach my anchor here, I just run the loop through and then several times around and I hold it in my hand and pull it tight. And after I knot it, I cut off the excess and that's it. This is the sign I showed you earlier that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I'm going in and I'm going to use my painter's tape and tape around right under the wheel. At least I think that's a whale. And I'm going to use my blue chalk paint in the color Glacier. And I'm going to give it probably about a coat and a half to get really good coverage and not show the stuff that was underneath the whale. And I also give the second layer there another coat of the white Waverly chalk paint because I'm trying to cover up those letters. And then I put on some tape and I'm going to paint with the white to make sure none of my peach will bleed through. Once I get that done, I'm going to cover this bottom in the peach colored paint and it will take two heavy coats to get really good coverage. Now I'm going to use that stencil I showed you earlier and I'm going to tape off first of all the places that I don't want to use right now because it won't fit on my piece the way it is. So I have to recenter it, but it's okay. I'm just using painter's tape and I'm coming in with this little brush that I got from the Dollar Tree for stenciling and I'm just spouncing on the paint. I just hold down the stencil to make sure that it doesn't bleed under where I don't want it to. And there you can see I'm removing the first one. And yes, chalk paint isn't necessarily ideal for stenciling, but it worked y'all, so I, I'm happy with it. And then I'll take off Meet Me. I centered it at the top. So I have the top and the bottom where I want them to go. And that makes it real easy now to come in with By The and put it in the center of the two. So you just make it work. You do have to wash the stencil in between and use some more tape, but it's okay. It was a really cheap, inexpensive way to do this and I didn't need my Cricut machine to make it work. So we'll peel that off. Now I'm using some more of that sticker that I used earlier on the stacked books. And I'm just trimming out this mermaid and we'll place her down close to my S. I thought it was funny that the bottom of her tail looks just like that S. Then I have these stickers that I showed you and I'm just going to use one of the little shells and place it here at the bottom. And with that, pretty much this project's complete. Okay, this project is short and sweet, but it packs a lot of punch. I'm going to take, first of all, one of those little charms off of that set from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to paint it in the Sun-Kissed Peach acrylic paint. It's a matte finish. 
I'm going to paint all those little nooks and crannies. And then I'm going to remove the label from my bottle here. And by the way, it would be really cool to have shells that you had collected on your own to put in the bottle. And I'm taking off that little raffia at the top. It wasn't a lot to dress it up. This is that macrame cord. I got it at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use it and cut off a section long enough to go around my bottle several times. And I found with this cording, you really do need to tie knots in the end each time or it will completely unravel. And I like the looks of the knots anyway. Then I have a little bit of cording here that I'm going to thread back through that charm. And then I'm going to actually tie it to my rope because it would be impossible to do it afterwards. I would have to glue it, but I want it to be tied on and hanging down. And so we'll trim that off, wrap it around several times, tie a couple of knots, ravel the ends there below the notch, trim them off, and that's pretty much it for this project. Like I said, short, sweet, and easy. So this is the little birdhouse I showed you earlier. It came from the Dollar Tree. My thinking on this is to turn it into like a little tiki hut, but I'm still going to keep it in the aesthetics of the tray that I'm making, right? I don't want it to look out of place with the other items, but I am going to paint the entire roof line and all of the edges and underneath the roof as well. Then I'm going to come in with the peach paint and I'm going to paint the platform it sits on, including the bottom of this piece. I'm going to be using that sticky back wallpaper that I showed you earlier from the Dollar Tree to cover my birdhouse around the sides. So I made a small pattern out of an index card and then I just kept working with it to make sure it fit. And then I'm going to place it down onto the wallpaper and I'll just trace it out and then I'll cut that out as well so that we can place it onto the house. And after that, the back one matches the front, so it's not really hard to cut it to place it on. Everything is peel and stick. It works really easily. And then for the sides, they're a little more narrow than the front and back, but pretty much you cut right across where your eaves money is or your triangle at the top, and you can easily make your pattern from the same cards you already used. And we'll just stick that around our house, and it gives it a real beachy feel. I'm going to use this sticker here at the bottom on the same set of stickers I was using earlier. And it looks like a starfish kind of thing in the middle. And that's gonna be the door for my tiki hut, if you will. And then I'm using a little tiny shell. I thought this was so cute. And I attached it with some hot glue to be the doorknob. And then up at the top, we're gonna place another shell to dress up our tiki hut. And with that, our project is complete. Too cute for words. This is that cute house shape that I showed you earlier. Very simple piece of wood that I got at the Dollar Tree. It got painted first white, and now I'm going in and just going to paint the front of it in the glacier blue chalk paint. And then I come in and I'm going to paint the sides in the peach color paint. This is that flat acrylic paint. And once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to get out my tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to cut two of them first of all. I cut too many, you only need two. But I used my little table saw that I got at Harbor Freight. It looks very much like a miniature chop saw, but you take off the width of the tumbling tower blocks off of two of them to compensate for how we're doing the top. First thing I'm going to do is take two and glue them together here at the side and then I'll do that two more times so that I have three sets of two. Then I'll take one set of two and start placing them on the roof line. I'm starting here on the left. I'll place some glue and then just kind of center the blocks right even with the roof pitch. Then when I put on the next two, I'm going to move it up to meet the blocks that I just placed on. And that's why I had to cut two off. So I'm going to place those down again, centering it. And once you do that, just place on the ones to the right. Then I'll join those two shorter ones and we'll place those on the left to complete our roof line. I have these stickers and I'm going to use the one at the top and just place it right across the top of my house to dress it up. You could mount it on cardstock if you would like to, to make it thicker. Then I'm cutting off a piece of that wallpaper I showed you earlier. And I cut out, first of all, a little sample and made me a door. Then I'll just trace it on the back of my wallpaper and then cut that out. 
and then I'll just place it down centered here on my house to be the door for the house. I love this beachy paper, y'all. Then I'm going to use one more sticker from this sheet. I'm going to use that fish and just place it right across the middle of my door just to dress it up and make it look like a beach hut. And that's pretty much it for this project. This is that picture holder that I showed you earlier that I got at the Dollar General when it was on sale. It got painted white in that marathon painting I did. And now I'm going in with the peach and I'm going to paint all of the edges all the way around in the peach color. I'm going to be using this metal starfish. It came off this metal sign that I got at the Dollar Tree. I just twisted it carefully back and forth and I'm going to use it as the centerpiece of my sign here. I'm going to place hot glue on the back and in all the corners and we'll just mount that down carefully in the center because I almost spilled that glue on me, y'all. Now I'm coming in with this small piece of scrap ribbon that I found in blue and I'm going to cut it in half and place that down and then I just come in with several more ribbons and I'm going to cut them about six inches long because it's easier to take it off later if it's too long than it is to add some back in. So I'm just using all my favorite colors that I showed you earlier. My ribbon is wired but your ribbon does not have to be wired. And what I like to use these photo holders for, by the way, is sometimes I put my favorite picture in there, like in this case, my favorite beach picture. Or you can also put a scripture there that's maybe your scripture of the week that you're going to memorize. So you can use them for a lot of different things. They could even hold your favorite recipe. Once I have all of the ribbon at an X and placed on top of each other, I'm just making a messy bow. I'm going to wrap my twine several times around, trim up that bow, some of the edges I'm going to just cut in a diagonal. Some of them I will dovetail. Once I get it like I want it, I'm going to tie it around my metal piece here, but I am going to secure it with hot glue as well. And that's pretty much it. This is that one by four I showed you earlier. If you know anything about lumber, it's not a true four inches wide. It's more like three and a half. It's also cut at about three and three quarters inches. And of course it got painted white when I was painting everything white that needed to be painted. And now I went in and I painted all of the edges with glacier blue. I'm going to cut off one fourth of this napkin here. These came from the Dollar Tree. I'll separate it out, making sure that it's down to one ply. Otherwise it won't work very well on the project. And then I'm going to check my placement very carefully because I want as much of the words on there as possible and that shell at the top. And I'll just soft bend it around. I'm going to come in with my Mod Podge and give it a nice even coat. You don't need too much because this is a napkin, right? So it's very thin. And I'll just pat that down and let it dry. And once it's dry, I went in with my scissors and I'm going to cut the edge. You could also use your sanding block and just take off those edges and it would be very simple, but of course I couldn't find mine, so I just improvised. Then I'm taking some tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to place two here on the back, glue one on top of the other, and then once I checked it, I decided I would put one across the top as well. And that makes our stand and it'll stand nicely. Put a coat of Mod Podge on the top and that's it for this project. Very simple. Hey y'all, it's Trish. For my tear tray, I'm going to be showing you how I made an apple themed fall tear tray. For my part of the video, it's going to be set up a little bit differently than I normally do it. Instead of setting up each individual project, we're going to go from one right into the other. Since they all relate to one thing, I thought this would be a cool way of doing it. So for our first project, I was wanting a little apple crate and the crates from the Dollar Tree won't fit on my tear tray. I have a small one, but I had this little box that I had gotten from the Dollar Tree and I thought, you know what, we could make a crate out of it. So I cut the back off of this and then I cut that little lip off the front. Now this is a pretty um, thick cardboard, like pressed cardboard, Top box but with my box cutter and my little ruler there I was able to cut these pieces off pretty easily 
and then I peeled off as much of the paper as I could get. Now, I don't mind if this is rustic looking. My grandfather had a farm when we were growing up, and there was tons of these little crates around, and they were always really rustic. So that's kind of the feel that I'm going with. Now that I have it cut down, sanded, I'm going to paint it. And I'm doing it with the Waverly chalk paint in the color plaster. And I did paint it on the outside and the inside. Now while that's drying, I want to make some apples. They did have little apples at Hobby Lobby, but they were like $8 a bag. And I just did not want to spend that much for one part of a project. But I had these little foam hearts I got these from the thrift store, but they originally came from Dollar Tree, and I thought, you know what, I think we can make some apples out of these. So I pulled the sticks out, and then I cut the bottom off of it, kind of cut it in like an indention, and then I put the sticks back in it, and I used my Apple Barrel acrylic paint in the color Red Apple, and I give these a really good coat of paint. Now I did paint that bottom where you could see the white foam too, and I went over this one good time. I really didn't have to go over it again. The glitter shows through, but I actually like that. I thought that it just kind of gave it something extra. I really was happy with how these turned out once I was finished. Now, while those are drying, I'm going to work on my crate some more. So I grabbed my ruler and I made two marks that were kind of the same distance apart. I wasn't real worried about making them perfect. Again, I wanted this to be rustic. And then I would just draw lines across it with my pencil. Once I got all my lines drawn, I'll take that pencil and kind of sketch over it and then rub it with my finger. And this gives it kind of like shiplap lines and it makes it look more like a crate and again I had that rustic look that I was looking for just like the ones on grandpa's farm now I had this little sign left over from a project that I did last year I just popped it off but all it is is one of those little chalk boards from the Dollar Tree I wrote five cent on it with a chalk pen and then I'm going to glue it on the front of my crate I took a small piece of burlap that I had left over from another project and I cut it down to fit in my crate. Then I stuffed some of my raffia in there. Now we're going to work on our apples some more. My paint's dry, so I just went outside and I grabbed a little twig off the ground and I started breaking off tiny pieces of it and using just a dab of hot glue and gluing it right there into the middle of my apple. And y'all, don't these look like apples? I was so excited about these. I think they are so stinking cute. Now, once we get all of our twigs in there, we're just going to put them in our crate. And with that, this project is complete. For my next project, I wanted to make a little gnome that would fit on my tray. Now, like I told you guys, my tray is small, so I'm just going to use one of these baby socks that I got from the Dollar Tree, and I'm going to use some old fabric that I had on hand to stuff it with, but you can use anything. I'm going to use a piece of that um, mop head for the beard, and then I love this little apple fabric that I found at Joann's to use for the hat. So all I'm doing is stuffing that fabric down into my sock and getting it where it will stand up. And then I'm going to use a couple of rubber bands and close up the top. Now you don't have to use fabric. You could use fiber fill. You could use something out of a pillow, whatever you want to use, even plastic bags, as long as you can get it stuffed. Now I'm going to take that little fiber mop head that I got from Dollar Tree and I'm cutting off a corner of it because I liked how it kind of looked like a beard when I put it on there like that. We're going to trim it up so that it fits well. And then I'm just going to use some hot glue on the back of it and glue it right on to the front of this. I'll trim it up, you know, kind of give him a haircut so he's not quite so shaggy. That thing was shaggy, y'all.
Now, once I got it trimmed up, I started working on the hat. I just took this little square of fabric that I had. I put glue down one side and then I just turn it so that the points up at the top and glue those edges together. And this gives me a little cone. Now I'm just going to trim around on the bottom until it looks like a little hat. And then I fit it on there, make sure it's going to fit and trimmed it up a little more. I didn't use a pattern for this. I just kind of, you know, freehanded it. Then I'm going to use some hot glue and glue it right down to my little gnome. We'll put a little bit there on the front and glue it down close to the beard. Now, I was going to use one of those little button things for his nose, but I thought it was too small. So I just grabbed a wooden bead and then I'm going to use a little bit of glue and glue it right there at the base of the hat. Now, it did have two little holes on the side, so I just put a little dot of glue there and kind of pushed the beard up into it. I like for my hat to flop over. So I just kind of flopped it over, used one little drop of glue and glue it down. And then I thought, let's do something a little bit extra to that tip. So I had these apple beads that I got from Hobby Lobby and I grabbed one of those and cut the back off the shank with my wire cutters. And then we're just gonna glue it right there to the bottom of the tip of his hat. Now, when I got to looking at this, I thought his nose just really blended in too much for my liking. So I took some of my beachcomber beige and my melted chocolate paint and mixed it up. And I painted his nose as carefully as I could. I did get a little drop on the beard, but I can trim that out with my scissors. I wasn't real worried about it when I finally saw it. Now, once this dries, this project is complete. Now we are going to make a candy apple. You can't have a tear tray without a candy apple. So we're going to use one of these faux apples that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use this small dowel. I think this one actually came from the Dollar Tree. A little bit of ribbon. I'm going to use some acrylic paint in beachcomber beige and melted chocolate. These are both from Apple Barrel. And then for the nuts, I'm going to use steel cut oats. I think these look like nuts. The first thing I did was take my glue gun, just the tip of it, and I melted into the top of my apple so that my dowel would fit right down in there. And y'all, it was a perfect fit. Then I just broke off my dowel about how long I wanted it and used my scissors and trimmed it up. Now I'm going to mix some of that melted chocolate paint and some of that beachcomber beige paint until I get a color that looks kind of like caramel. I did have to keep adding my beige in there until I got something that I liked. Then I'm just gonna take my brush and I just kind of brush it on there. I did not want it to be even across that top. I wanted it to look like we dipped it in caramel. Now you can see that I'm kind of spouncing it on for that second coat because I wanted it to have some texture and look like caramel. Now I'm going to put some of my steel cut oats down onto my um, paper there and then I just kind of roll it around in it. It wasn't getting all over it so I figured out that if I just pick it up and sprinkle it on it sticks and it looks like nuts. Now I'm going to take a little piece of my ribbon there and just tie a shoestring bow around my stick and with that this project is complete. I love making little signs for my tear tray that fit into the theme, and I love using these little signs that I find at Dollar General. They're only a dollar a piece regularly, but at the end of each season, they mark them to 90% off. So when they're 10 cent, I pick up every one they have because Cricut makes it so easy to change these and personalize them, and it looks like something you bought that way. So the first thing I did was take off the tag and then I removed the twine and I took my little wire cutters and popped out that staple. Now, I didn't make you guys watch me cut this one and weed it because, you know, we did that with the towel a little while back, but that's all that I did for this. Now I'm going to use my heat gun and go right around these edges and just kind of heat it up so that it makes that glue soft and then this back will pop right off. I just keep going around until I get it off. 
and then when it came off most of the paper came off and then I took off as much of the rest as I could now I'm just going to paint this back with my Waverly chalk paint and I'm using the color plaster you can use whatever fits your decor and I'll leave it to dry now we're going to take our wording that we cut out with our Cricut and I'm just going to use some transfer tape on it. I use my little spatula there and rub over it to, so that it sticks. And then you just pull the backing away from the wording. This is so much easier than trying to lift it up. Now we're going to center it onto our sign. And then I made sure it was centered by putting the frame on top of it. And we'll use our spatula and run over this and it's going to stick right down and then we pull up our transfer tape. Now when I did that, it did take some of my paint with it, but that's no big deal. I just grabbed a little brush and touched it back up. Now we're going to apply our frame back to this with a little bit of hot glue. And once I got it stuck down, I did see that I had gotten paint on the sides. So I just took my sanding block and went around it and got as much of it off as I could so that it wasn't, you know, an eyesore. I wanted it to look professional. Now I wanted something a little bit extra. So I took one of these apple buttons from Hobby Lobby and I cut the shank off the back. These come off real easily. I put a little bit of glue on it and stuck it right there at the bottom. And with that, this project's complete. Now this one is so simple, I'm not sure you could even call it a project, but I love it. I grabbed some cinnamon sticks. I had these left over from last year. I got them at Hobby Lobby, but you can use any cinnamon sticks. I took three of them and glued them together in a little stack. Then I took some twine and wrapped around it and tied it into a double knot. Now we're going to trim it up. Then I'm going to take my twine and I wrap it around three of my fingers about six times and cut it off. Then we'll use another little piece right there around the middle and tie that into a double knot. And this is going to give you a little bow. But I didn't want to leave it a little bow. So I took my scissors and I cut open those loops and this gave me like a little shaggy bow. We're going to use a little bit of hot glue and glue it right there to the top of our cinnamon sticks. Now to dress this up a little bit, I'm going to use another one of those little apple buttons. We're going to cut the shank off the back and glue it on top. And with that, this project's complete. Simple, but perfect for an apple tray. Our next project is another really simple one. I'm going to use this three inch square of wood. I think I got this from Hobby Lobby one of my tumbling tower blocks and this crisp apple design from the back of the farmhouse calendar from last year i'm also going to use some distressing ink and one of those furniture repair markers from the dollar tree i love to use these to stain these small projects it dries so fast almost instantly it has no smell and it doesn't make a big mess so these are perfect for these little projects I stained my piece of wood on the front the back and the sides and then I also stained my tumbling tower block now I'm going to cut out that little crisp apple design off the back of this calendar as I said this is from the calendar last year that Dollar Tree put out then I'm going to use my distressing ink and just kind of go around those edges just to make it blend in so that it doesn't look like a cut piece of paper. I'm going to use just a plain old glue stick on the back of this and then stick it right down into the center. I love this. I take my little tumbling tower block there, put a little bit of hot glue and glue it into the back at the center and this is going to make it stand up. Of course, I had to distress this, so I grabbed my Waverly plaster paint and a stiff brush, went around those edges, and with that, this project is complete. I love beaded garlands, and I wanted one to go with my apple theme tray. Since I had a lot of that caramel paint I had mixed up left over from my candy apple, I thought that this would be perfect to use on a beaded garland. So I grabbed 14 of these textured beads that I had 
and I put them on a skewer and then I just painted them with my leftover paint. Now I kind of dab it around, get in between them as best as I can and just make sure that I get them covered really well and then I'll lay it down to dry. While that's drying, I took one of these apple wood shapes that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to use some of my apple barrel red apple paint and paint this on the front and the back. Once I got my apple painted red, I took some of my truffle Waverly chalk paint and painted the stem. And then I used some of my grass green, um, I think it's just craft paint, and painted the leaves. Now while that's drying, I'm going to make a tassel. So I grabbed a little three inch piece of wood and I used some of my twine and I wrapped it around about 20 times and cut it off. Then I took some red ribbon I had on hand, wrapped it around a couple of times, and I took some of this red and white ribbon that I had used on my candy apple and wrapped it around a couple of times. Now I'm going to take my twine and I run it up under there, pull it up to the top, and tie it into a double knot as tight as I can get it, and then I slide this off of that wood. Now I'm just going to pull off a long piece that I thought was long enough for my garland and cut it, and then I take another piece cut that off and wrap it around the top of my tassel there about six times and tie it into a double knot. We'll cut off the ends of that and then we're going to cut open the loops that we made with our twine and our ribbon and there's our little tassel. I just kind of fluff it up and make it look good. Now we're going to take our beads. They are dry and I also had 22 of these red beads that I had left over from Christmas and I just start stringing them onto my twine. I did a pattern that was one red, one caramel, two red, one caramel, one red, one caramel, and so on and so forth until I had used all of my beads up. Then I tie a double knot into the end that holds my beads in place. I run my twine through that hole that's on my apple and I tie another double knot on that other side of that and trim it off. I went to my Cricut and I cut out apples five cent out of permanent vinyl. Then I weeded it out and I'm using my transfer tape and my little spatula there and making sure that it's stuck to my transfer tape. I flip it over and peel off the back. Then I center it up on my apple and I use my spatula to burnish it down. Now, if you don't have a Cricut or a cutting machine, you can totally do this by hand. We have lots of videos showing you how you can do lettering without a cutting machine. I'll even put a link to one up above. For this project, we're going to use one of these mini rolling pins that I got from Hobby Lobby back in the unfinished wood section, a small piece of fabric, some Waverly chalk paint, and some Mod Podge. I measured my little rolling pin there to see how long I needed my fabric to be. Then I just make a little cut in it and rip it off because I want those edges to be kind of shaggy. Then we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint and paint our rolling pin. I'm using the crimson paint. Now you can use anything that you want to use. I'm painting both ends of my rolling pins and I also decided to go ahead and paint the center of this even though I'm going to be covering it. That way it all looks just alike. Now once my paint is dry, I'm going to use my Mod Podge and put down a generous coat of it. Then I start wrapping my fabric around it. When I get to the point where there's no more Mod Podge, I put down a little more and just keep going until my fabric meets the other side. Once I get over there, I make another little slit and rip it off, and then I'm going to use some more Mod Podge to seal this down. Now I'm going to take it and go all the way around my rolling pin, covering my fabric, and then I'm also going to cover the ends of this as well and leave it to dry. Once our Mod Podge is dry, I'm going to take a little piece of my red and white ribbon that I've been using in my other projects and I wrap it around my rolling pin and tie it into a double knot. I love these little wooden stickers that they have at Dollar Tree and we're going to use one of these leaf ones. I take one of my furniture repair markers that also come from the Dollar Tree and I stain this on the front. 
I want to put it right there in the center of my ribbon, but I didn't trust that little sticky dot on the back, so I take it off and I'm just going to use some hot glue. I tied this into a bow, but I wasn't really feeling it completely. So what I end up doing is cutting open those loops and making this like a shaggy bow like we did with our cinnamon sticks. Now I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue on the back of our leaf and stick it right into the middle of this. I thought it needed a little more dimension, so I grabbed some of my plaster chalk paint and kind of went over it like a dry brush effect. And then I grabbed one of my white gel markers and gave it some veins. And with that, this project is complete. For our last project, I'm going to use one of these wood slices. I got these from Arteza, but you can get them from Hobby Lobby. I've bought them from there, so I know they have them. And I love making all kinds of things with these. So for this one, I'm going to use some more of that Apple Barrel Red Apple paint. And we're just going to paint the inside of it. I left my bark natural, but I got as much of the inside painted as I could without getting it onto my bark. I wasn't worried if there was just a little sliver showing around. Now once our paint is dry, I'm going to roll this around until I see the side that stands the best. And then I'm going to use one of those little tumbling tower blocks from Dollar Tree and glue it on the back and this makes it stand up. I took a brown chenille stem that I had, I, I think this actually came from Dollar Tree as well, and I cut it down and then I kind of turn up the end of it just a little bit, use a little bit of hot glue on that end and stick it right down into a little opening on my bark. I trimmed off the end of this and that gives my apple a stem. Now I'm going to use one of these leaves that I had left over from another project. I just clip one of them off. We're going to put a little bit of hot glue on it and glue it right down to the base of our stem. I wanted to write fall on this and you can see that I used one of those white pins that come from the Dollar Tree, but it really didn't take well. So I ended up grabbing one of my um, Arteza gel pens and filled this in and I was really happy with how that looked. Now you could use a cutting machine for this, you could use paint and a paintbrush anything you want to fill this in. And there it is all put together. I love this tear tray and y'all surprisingly, my husband loved this one too. Hey y'all, it's Kay. So today I'm going to be dressing my tear tray for fall. I have several projects that I'm going to share with you and I'm going to run through the items I'm going to be using really fast. Some wooden letters from the Dollar Tree plus an extra A and L from a second package. Some wooden tags from Walmart. One of these three and a half by three and a half wood planks. Some scrap pieces of one by threes. Tumbling tower blocks. Some small wood beads. One one inch dowel. A wooden plaque from the Dollar Tree one 3x7 wooden plank and a craft stick, some wooden words from Target, some wooden pumpkins from Target, three different patterns of scrapbook paper. I got mine at Hobby Lobby. Some jute twine and also some jute covered wire. Some chalk paint in white, pumpkin, sage, and also cashew. Two corn skewers, a pattern I drew out for a miniature cutting board, some sunflower stickers, buttons from Hobby Lobby that look like pumpkins and sunflowers, gold paint pen, some florals, some two and a half inch wired ribbon, some smaller width ribbons, two of these came from the Dollar Tree, this truck Christmas ornament that I got from Dollar General, some natural raffia, and finally, some small alphabet stickers. For this project, I'm going to be making a set of stacked books. I'm going to paint the first book in the sage green chalk paint. I'm painting the two flat sides and one edge. And then for the bottom book, I'm going to paint it in the pumpkin orange. And I do the same thing. I paint two flat sides and one edge. 
and then I come in with my third book and I'm going to paint it in the white chalk paint and I paint it pretty much all over I just leave the middle part because it won't show with being glued between the other two books and then I'm going to paint what would be the pages of my book so I paint the two end pieces and one side edge and I do this for the orange book and also the sage green book then I'm just going to use hot glue right in the middle and attach my two bottom books together and then I'll come in and attach the top book and I traced in with a pencil the words it's fall y'all on the three books and then I'm going to use this gold paint pen and trace over the letters then I'm going to take a piece of this burlap ribbon and I'm going to place it around the side I just cut off a length that I know is going to go around and then I decide it's way too wide for these books so I'm going to fold it first in half and then I'm going to fold the middle part the folded edge in about a third of the way then I'll just use hot glue to attach that down I'm not going to glue all the way across I'll just glue in several spots and once I've done that I'm just going to attach it around this end of my books and I'll glue it here on the bottom and then to cover up my glue seam I'm going to come in with this plaid orange and natural ribbon and I'm going to wrap it right around the middle and that gives our ribbon a finished edge and it looks really elegant and pretty and professional and then I'm going to take this piece of pumpkin ribbon I had about 20 inches left I think and I just fold it in half and I'm going to turn it into a very simple bow by making two loops on each side and then I'm going to use a piece of twine and twist it around my bow several times and tie it in a couple of knots and then I'm going to fluff out my bow and get ready to attach it right there to the top with a little hot glue and trim up those ends and then I'm going to place two of those little orange mums the miniature mums diagonally across from each other right under the edge of the bow and then I'll come in also with some of our greenery just a couple of pieces of lamb's ear that I cut off and I'm going to place those right between the two loops of the bow on each side and with that our project is complete so this project is going to be a fall swag just to go around the side of my tear tray I'm going to take all of my little wooden tags and I'm going to paint them with the sage chalk paint then I'm going to take my letters and I'm painting them with the pumpkin chalk paint and they spell fall of course these wooden letters are about an inch and a quarter tall of course they came from the Dollar Tree then I take my tags and I trace them out onto the back of my scrapbook paper and I'm going to come in and cut out four of them just so you know I got this paper just recently at Hobby Lobby For one of the tags I'm just going to leave it green and I'm going to put on one of the little sunflowers that I showed you in a package that's going to be the first tag on my swag and for the other pieces I'm going to come in with some Mod Podge and that's how I'm going to glue them down to my tags and once it, the glue sets and everything's dry I'm going to put a coat of Mod Podge on the top of my tags as well we'll just seal that in nicely and then once that's dry I come in with my hole punch and I'm going to punch out those holes by looking at the back and lining it up and now I'm gluing on my letters to spell out fall
And once everything is nice and dry, I'm going to cut out some of my twine and make little loops at the top of each of the tags. I'm just doing a little slip knot by sliding it in and then pulling it back through the loop. And I'm going to, to do that for all of my tags. And then I figured out how I wanted to attach them all together and I decided I needed to shorten all of these tags by tying a knot closer to the bottom. And that's what I did. I came in and tied shorter knots onto all of the strings. Because that's how I'm going to attach them to another piece of jute twine. I strung on a bead and then I string on one of the tags through the loop that we made. And then I put on another bead. And then I'm going to take hot glue and put it in between the two beads and that will secure everything to my piece of twine. That was the best way I could come up with to have the beads around the tag and also keep everything from sliding. I wanted them to stay put on the twine. And then I string on the other letters. I make sure there's a half an inch between each of the tags at the sides. And so I just do the same thing. Put on each letter a bead before the tag and a bead after and glue the two beads together. And then I just work my way down the swag. One thing I did wrong was I should have left a longer piece at the front of the swag. Found that out when I was attaching it to my tray. But that's okay. I came in later and I just tied another piece of twine there and made sure it was nice and long on each end so that I had some room to tie it into the grooves of my tray. And you can see there that the whole thing took about 11 inches or so, maybe 12, not counting the extra string on the end. This is going to be a quick and easy, simple sign that I'm going to make using some scrapbook paper that I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm going to use a baby wipe and this sage green chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the sign on the front, the back, and the edges, and then I paint two of my tumbling tower blocks as well with the same paint. And then I line up my board on my scrapbook paper over one of the trucks that I liked because I want it to be towards the bottom of the sign. And then I'm just cutting that out. I painted, first of all, my word thankful with my white chalk paint, but I didn't like how it worked on the sign. So later you'll see me come back and repaint it. Then I took Mod Podge and I'm going to give my sign a really thick coat, nice and even. And then I'm going to spread out my sign onto my board. And once it's dry, then I will come back with some more Mod Podge and then I came in and I painted the word thankful in the pumpkin orange because it just didn't look as good on the sign in the white. And then I take two of my tumbling tower blocks and I'm going to glue them together. The flat sides out like so. And then I'm going to put a little glue on one edge and glue it to the back, bottom, middle of my sign. And then I take the word thankful and I'm going to use some glue and glue it down to the top and that's my sign. So the first thing I'm going to do is take my miter shears and I'm going to square up these ends of my craft stick and get it at the length that I want to be the top of my scarecrow's hat. And then I give all of my pieces a really good coat of my cashew colored chalk paint. I'm going to paint the front, the edges, the sides, and the back as well. And here you can see I've taken a pencil and I've just sketched in a face of a scarecrow. And I'm taking this burlap. This is called laminated burlap. And I'm going to glue that on the top for my scarecrow's hat. And then I'm taking some raffia and I'm just going to twist it around my hand and make little sections and glue it down to the edge of the hat. 
Just using a little hot glue will place that right down. And once I get everything covered well, I'm going to come in with my scissors and cut the hair. I just give him a little haircut and make him look like a scarecrow. And now I'm going to come in with my markers and I'm going to trace out all of the features on my scarecrow's face to include the eyes, the mouth, and the nose, and his eyebrows. And then once I did that, I came in with some black chalk paint, and I'm going to first paint in both of my eyes, just using a little tiny brush. And then I do the same thing for the nose. I'm painting that in with that pumpkin colored paint. Then I paint some pink cheeks at the end of his smile. This is the piece that we cut off earlier and painted. I'm going to take this ribbon, fold it around the edges, and glue it in the back. For the brim of our scarecrow's hat. And I'm going to hot glue that there right to the edge, back at the angle that we drew out at the very beginning. I'm going to go back in and put some lines on my scarecrow's nose. So he looks a little more homemade and hand stitched. Now I'm going to paint the white of his eyes. And that's pretty much it. Just add a little flower onto his hat. I think he turned out cute. So the first thing I did was cut out that pattern that I drew off. And then I'm going to lay it out on this wooden plaque that I got at the Dollar Tree. I didn't have a square one, but I did have this oval and it fits. So I traced around it and then I'm going to come and cut that out. And once I have it cut out, I'm going to paint it with my pumpkin chalk paint. I'm going to give it a good coat on the front, the sides and the back. And then I'm taking this little wooden pumpkin and I'm giving it a green stem and paint my word grateful in the same green. This is called sage. Then I trace my cutting board onto the back of my scrapbook paper. And then I'm going to cut that out as well. And once I get that cut out, I'm going to give my piece a generous coat of Bod Podge. And then I'll just smooth that down to the cutting board. And then I'm going to use that pumpkin. It actually had some paper on the back. You just peel off and it had adhesive and so did the word grateful. These came from Target. And then I'm going to put them both down right onto my cutting board. And then I'm going to take one of the buttons that looks like a sunflower, cut off the shank at the back, a little hot glue. And I'll place that down on my cutting board as well right below the side of the pumpkin. And that's pretty much it. I kept it simple, but I do love how this one turned out. This project is going to be a miniature rolling pin, and I'm just going to take these corn skewers and remove the pins at the end by using my wire cutters. They come right out. And then I'm cutting a five inch piece of this dowel using my little table saw. I just kind of turn it around until all of the sides are cut. And then I'm coming in with my pumpkin orange chalk paint and I'm going to paint my dowel. And then once it's dry, I come in with my skewers and glue one to each end. Just like so. And to make a bow, I'm going to take this thin ribbon that I got at Michael's and twist it around my hand about three times and then pinch it in the middle once I get that cut off. And I'm just going to take a piece of twine and wrap it a couple of times around and tie a nice knot. And then I'll just cut off the excess. And of course that bow needed a little fluffing. And then once I got it like I wanted it, I glued it right there to the end of my rolling pin and trimmed up the ends. And I'm going to take one of these buttons and cut the shank off the back using my wire cutters and just glue it down to the center of the bow. 
And I'm taking these letters and I'm going to spell out pi. And I started with the E first and worked my way across. And then I'm going to glue the button after the shank has been cut off right to the side of the word pi. So pumpkin pie. And the final step is just to take a little Mod Podge and place right on top of the letters to make sure they stay on. So y'all know I'm crazy about the little red trucks and all of the trucks that are out there right now. So I had this ornament left over from the Dollar General last year. And I'm going to go in first of all and paint the top part of this truck and also the fenders in the sage green chalk paint. My tray just needed a little truck and this was the only one I had on hand. And I actually like the way it turned out. You could always put a tumbling tower block on the back to help it stand, but I just propped mine up against my center pole. And then I came in with this kind of big squash and mounted it to the back of the truck so I would have more room to mount my pumpkin. And I put it in the back of the truck. And the last thing I'm going to do is take one of those buttons and attach it right to the door of the pickup truck. And that's it for this project, quick and simple. Well, this is a quick and easy project. I'm just going to take three of these tumbling tower blocks, first of all, and glue them together side by side. And then I will take two and stagger them right there in the middle. So I'm doing like a little pyramid, three, two, and one. And then of course, I'm going to turn it over on the back and do the same thing, add the two and then the one. We're just making a little pumpkin. I've done these with the big blocks of wood before, but I'd never done them with a small, so I decided I would do it. And I'm just taking a baby wipe and some of this pumpkin chalk paint, and I'm going to paint my pumpkin more like a stain, really, because I did leave a lot of areas without paint. And then I'm just going to cut some of this wired jute and twist it around, and I twisted it around again till I finally got it in size for the pumpkin, and I just glued it right there to the top. Then I just took a couple of eucalyptus leaves and I just cut them off the sides of the little sprig. And then I'm just going to go in and glue them down either side of my pumpkin. And that's it for this project, y'all. Quick and simple, but I really love it on this tiered tray. The colors just work so well together. I'm going to be using this little trick-or-treat sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. Three scrap pieces of a one by four. They are about four inches long. Ideally, they would be five inches long, but we will make this work. This little wooden ghost that I got from Michaels, I got it for half price. A scrap piece of two by four that is about four inches tall. One of these wooden pumpkins that I got from Michaels. One boo sign that I got from the Dollar Tree. They come in a package of three. One set of these beads from the Dollar Tree. We will use the entire thing. I'm also going to be using some wooden beads that are just a little bit smaller than the ones from the Dollar Tree. One of these wooden scoops that came in the party section at Hobby Lobby. Three of these one inch split balls from Hobby Lobby. They come as a package of six. This home sign from the Dollar Tree, it originally was not painted, but I did paint it for another project, but I'm going to recycle it today. One of these wooden planks from the Dollar Tree, they are four and a half inches by four and a half inches. And I did want to show you this ghost that I got at the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use him exactly the way he came and put him on my tray. And this is the way he sounds. I'm going to be using several pages and cards from this paper collection. It's by Echo Park and it's called Hocus Pocus. I got mine at Tuesday morning. And I will be using lots of ribbons, thin ribbons, medium width ribbons, wired ribbons, you name it. I pulled out everything from my collection. This package of Jot permanent markers in an assortment of colors. 
these cute puffy stickers that I got at Joann's. I just love them, y'all, and I got this package for half price, so it was $2.50. These black glittered spiders that I got at the Dollar Tree, I love it because they have a clip on the back. These cute jeweled spider rings, I also got these at the Dollar Tree just like the other spiders. Some white Waverly chalk paint. Some black acrylic paint. Some acrylic paint in the color pumpkin orange. Some purple acrylic paint. And also some green acrylic paint, I used only the one on the right. I'm using one of these picture holders that I got in the wedding section at Hobby Lobby, some jute twine, a chenille stem and a zip tie, some Mod Podge, my hot glue gun, and I also used my art glitter glue. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these cut aparts from that paper collection by Echo Park. I'm just going to cut it off my sheet here. And then I'm going to paint my little piece of 2 before in my black acrylic paint. It only took one coat, but I do want to paint the sides and the front and the back. And while that is drying, I'm going to go ahead and trim up that little cut apart. I'm just going to take off all the little black edges. And then once it is dry, I'm going to use my Mod Podge. I'm going to apply it to the back of this paper because it's really thick. And I'm going to smooth it down to the front of my piece. And then once that's dry, I'm going to place a coat of Mod Podge on top as well. And then I'll just mark the center of the top once everything is dry, and I'm going to drill a hole right down through my piece of wood. Then I'm going to come in with some of those beads that I painted in another part of this project, and an orange one from another project, and I'm going to place them on my picture holder and slide it down into my piece with a little hot glue will secure that in place. Then to make a bow for the piece, I'm just going to cut four inch pieces of these three ribbons that will match. I got these at Hobby Lobby when they were 50% off. I'm going to place them on an X. I decided I would include the black and white polka dot in the smaller. And then we'll just pinch that in the middle. I'm going to secure mine actually with a little floral wire just to hold it nice and tight. And we'll twist that around, cut off the excess with my wire cutters. And then we'll come in and just start hacking with our scissors till we even it up on each side. I like to make some of the ones in the middle shorter than the ones at the back. I just want to make sure everything can be seen. I'll tie a piece of the black ribbon around the middle to hide the floral wire. Get it tight, cut off those ends. And then I'm just going to glue it right down to the top of my piece in the front. And that just dresses it up further. You can always put a recipe card on this. You could put your menu for Halloween or just a note of buying that trick-or-treat candy at the store. I love this little sign and I want to dress it up. So I came in with some wax paper and I'm just going to trace off the T and the C from the top to make some patterns. And then I traced off the two T's at the bottom as well. I'm just using my permanent marker by Jot that I got at the Dollar Tree. And this will give us some patterns. I'm going to cut those out, of course. And then I'm going to use my scrapbook paper and kind of align it on the different trick-or-treat characters. And I'm going to tape it down with some washi tape, cut that out. And then I take my time and make sure that I cut it out of the scrapbook paper so that I can keep as much of those characters as possible. And I'm going to eventually attach it here to the sign. And this is kind of what it's going to look like. I wish the paper showed up on camera as bright as it is in person. In person, it looks really pretty. Although the project came with some paint, I didn't trust myself to use it and I'm not sure of the quality of the paint. So I'm using my Jot Permanent Markers and I'm just going to use the colors that I'm using in this project. Green, yellow, purple, and orange. And I'll just color in all of the things that are left besides the ones that are going to be covered with the scrapbook paper. And then I'm going in with my black Jot Marker and I'm going to color in all the areas that are left in between on the front. I just think that was a lot easier than using paint and having to be really careful. For the stand and the sides of my piece and the back of my piece, I'm going to go in with black acrylic paint and just cover up all that raw wood, including the edges. Now I'm going to attach those letters that we cut out of scrapbook paper. I'm going to use my art glitter glue and a paintbrush to flatten it out and then we'll just smooth it down onto my letters. If you don't have art glitter glue, you can just as easily use Mod Podge. 
And the last thing I'm going to do is take my paint pen and fill in those places on the candy corn. And then I also put a few dots on my purple letters to make them stand out just a little bit more. And with that, this project is complete. tear tray has a loop at the top so I'm going to use my ribbons and make a bow. I cut first two pieces at seven inches out of this black and white stripe and then for this bat ribbon which I got at the Dollar Tree I'm going to cut two that are also seven inches long. For my third ribbon I'm going to cut it at six and a half inches, two pieces, and then for my final ribbon I'm going to cut it at six inches and I'm cutting again two pieces. And I'm going to do my favorite messy bow. I'm first of all going to fold all of my pieces in half just to make it easier, kind of like an assembly line. And then I'm coming in and I'm going to dovetail the ends of all my pieces by folding them in half and cutting from the center fold out to the wired edge. And now I'm just going to start by pinching it in the middle, kind of pleating it, getting it nice and pretty and then folding it up. Kind of making like a little bow tie, I call it. So you'll make two bow ties the same way, pinch it in the middle, fold it, and then I'm going to slide them side by side. I'm not going to overlap them, and I'm going to use some jute twine and tie it around the middle, and that will keep everything nice and tight while we work on our bow. This is the best way I have found to do really wide ribbon so that you don't waist ribbon and also that you don't have things overlapping in weird areas. Now I'm just going to do my second, third, and fourth ribbons the exact same way, folding them in half, pleating them nicely, putting them down onto the one before, and tying it off with some jute twine. You get to fluff as you go, and at the end, you shouldn't even have anything to trim off. The bow will totally be complete. And once we get everything tied off, you can double check your ends and fluff everything. I'm going to take a zip tie and place it around the middle. I'm going to put a chenille stem through the loop at the back. That's how I will attach it to my tray, pull everything tight and cut off that excess. And very little fluffing, this bow is done. Well, I do need to add something there in the middle, so I'm going to take one of those rings from the Dollar Tree that has a little jewel on it, and we'll just use a little hot glue and attach it right down to our bow. And with that, now our project is complete. Here it is attached to my tray. I'm going to be making a beaded tassel. I'm going to use these beads from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to totally remove them from the string, but I'm going to save the string to actually use in my project. Then I'm going to divide my beads equal amounts in four little sandwich bags. And then I'm going to come in with some acrylic paint and I'm just going to use the bag to help as my paintbrush, if you will, and dye my beads in the four colors that I'm using in this project. I'm going to do the black, the orange, the green, and of course the purple, but I'm not actually going to use these black beads in this particular project. I use them in a later project in this video. It was easier to just go ahead and dye them now. I'm going to take this metal pan that I got at the Dollar Tree, line it with a little wax paper, and then I'm going to empty my beads into each corner of the pan, and then I'll use a wooden stick and separate them so that they can lay out and dry. Because I'm using acrylic paint, it does seem to take a little longer to dry. Then let's go in with the small beads. I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to dye them with the black acrylic paint in a baggie, and then I'm just going to pour them out on some wax paper and we'll let these dry also. I didn't have the exact color of ribbons that I needed, so I'm taking this ribbon from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to cut three eight inch pieces and I'm going to paint one in the orange, one in the purple, and one in the green. I didn't have the colors I needed in the thickness of the ribbon that I wanted to use, but that's okay, we can make our own. I'm going to reuse that string that the beads came on. I'm going to tape it right here to the top of my Cricut scraper. I'm going to take my jute twine and I'm going to run it around my Cricut scraper about 15 times. And once that is done, I'm going to come back in with my ribbons and I'll just wrap them around my Cricut scraper as well. You can use whatever width of ribbon you would like. The thinner is actually the better, and mine are a little wide in some places, but that's okay, we'll make it work. And then we'll remove our tape, 
and then I'm going to tie a really tight knot at the top of our tassel. Next, I'm just going to cut the end of the jute twine and remove everything from the scraper. And then I'm going to pull it down tight in my hand. And I'm going to take a piece of that jute twine and tie it down, oh, about half an inch to three quarters from the top. And you want to do two really tight knots. And after I do that, I'm going to wrap another piece of twine around it just to make it look a little more finished. And I'll tie that off with a nice knot as well. And this even up those ends, I'm going to cut diagonal lines on all of my ribbons and I'll fluff my tassel nicely. And now let's string on those beads. My pattern is going to be orange, green, purple, but I'm going to place one of the smaller black beads in between each bead as I go. I took a little clear tape and put it on the end of my string and kind of cut it at an angle. And that just helps string on the smaller beads, which gave me a little bit of trouble, not too much. But the easiest thing to do is just trim up those ends each time that it starts fraying too much. Once I finished, I'm going to come in with one of these spiders from the Dollar Tree that clips on. And I'm going to tie it to the end of my beaded tassel, just working it around that last bead, which is black. I did that on purpose. And then I come in with some acrylic paint and I'm going to paint my string and that clip as well. And finally, the last thing I'm going to do is take one of these puffy stickers, glue it on to my tassel with a little hot glue and hide the knot there. And, and with that, this project is complete. These scrap pieces of wood are one by fours and I only had enough to cut them at four inches long. So I went back to my miter saw and I cut off half an inch at the side. So they are now three inches wide because lumber isn't really four inches wide anyway. I'm going to use my sandpaper, some really rough sandpaper y'all. And I'm going to sand one edge of all three books. This will be the edge that was not cut. I'm going to leave the cut edge to be the pages of my book. But I want to sand it good enough that I round it off and it looks more like a spine of a set of books. And once I do that, I'm going to clean it up and then I'm going to come in and paint all of the edges and the front and the back of all three pieces in the white Waverly chalk paint. This will just be a good base coat. Think of it as like the primer coat, but the sides will stay white because that will be my faux pages. Now I'm coming in with my orange and I'm going to paint the rounded spine and then the front and the back in the orange. That will take at least two coats. And then we'll come in with the next color and we'll paint it in the green and we'll do the same thing the front the back and the spine and for my final book i'm going to paint it in the purple that i've been using and again just painting the front the back and the spine and yes you could leave off some of the paint that's in the middle but i just didn't want to take the time to sort it out so i'm going to start gluing them together the purple is going to be on the bottom, the green in the middle. I'm just using hot glue, y'all, and I'll have the orange on top. My ribbon is a bit wide for this book, but I'm going to cut a piece long enough to go around. Then I'll cut this ribbon in half. This is not ideal, but I love this ribbon, y'all. I just had to use it. So I'm going to wrap it around just a little from the end, secure it at the bottom, fold over that edge so we have a finished edge, and then glue the ribbon together. Then I'm going to take the piece that was left over and I'm going to fashion it into a really simple bow. I'll take a piece of floral wire and twist it around the middle to hold it together. And that will give it a nice crisp middle part. And then I'm going to take my wire cutters, of course, and cut off that excess wire. And I'll use some glue to make sure everything's secure. I'm also going to dovetail the ends of my ribbon. And once my bow is fluffed, I'm just going to take a little hot glue and attach it right down to the ribbon on the top of my book stack. Then I'm going to take a little puffy sticker, a little pumpkin, and place it right there in the center to hide any wire that would have shown. I'm going to use these stickers from this Echo Park paper collection called Hocus Pocus, and that will be the title for my books. If you don't have this paper collection, you can always use your paint pen and just write on the edge of your books. You could write trick or treat if you wanted to. And then one more little sticker on the top to be the top part of my book there. And that's pretty much it for this project. I love stacked books. I always have one in every tier tray. I 
I got my little wooden jack-o'-lanterns at Michael's and I paid half price which was only a dollar for a pack of eight. This wood is a lot thicker than the ones at the Dollar Tree y'all so this was really the better buy. I'm going to paint the front, the back, and the edges in this pumpkin orange acrylic paint. I have one of these little plastic cutting boards from the Dollar Tree. They come in a pack of two and I'm just laying my pumpkin down on it. I'm going to trace it out with a marker and then I'm going to come in and cut it out just a little inside the lines. You want it to fit inside the pumpkin. This plastic has a shiny side and a matte side. I'm going to paint the matte side only with this lemon yellow acrylic paint. Now, if you don't want it to scratch, you're going to need to put a coat of Mod Podge on top of it because it will scratch off of this plastic. But then I'll take my hot glue gun and I'm just going to attach it right to the back of my piece so it looks like the light is glowing within. And now I'm going to cover our little stem at the top of the pumpkin. I'm just going to use some jute twine and my pokey tool because you don't want to get burned. And I'll just work my way until I cover the entire stem. Then I just took all of my ribbons that I had that were in different tones of green, a little bit different thicknesses, but none of them really thick, but I cut them all at three inch pieces and I just stacked them one on top of the other in an X pattern. And of course, I'm going to be making a messy bow. I'm going to take a piece of jute twine and I'm going to tie it right around the middle, nice and tight. You can wrap it a few times if you want, but I'm going to place a sticker there in the middle. And I did have to trim it up because three inches was a little long, but I would rather have it a little long than a little short. I'm going to take some hot glue, attach it right there to the top, get this little spider sticker and we'll place it right in the middle with some hot glue. I attached a couple of tumbling tower blocks on the back so that my pumpkin would stand nicely on my tear tray. I picked up this home sign at the Dollar Tree. It comes unfinished wood. I had painted it for a different project, but today I'm going in and I'm going to paint it in the different colors I'm using today. I'm going to paint the H in the green, and then I'm going to paint the O in the orange. We'll do the M in the purple, and then I'll finish up with that green. I call it monster green, but I think it's really called spring green. And that purple and orange did take two coats for full coverage. But once I get it together, then I'm going in and I'm going to paint the rest of the piece, the white part that's left, in the black acrylic paint. I'm going to paint on the front there, the back, all the little nooks and crannies, the sides, and I'll end up painting the bottom as well. Now to make it look like it fits in with our tear tray, I'm going to go in with my little puffy stickers and I'm just going to choose items that I thought went well with either the color or the shape of the letter and we'll just dress it up and make it cute. The hardest part was deciding when to quit. And with that, this project is complete. I got this little wooden ghost at Michael's for half price and it's perfect because it will stand on its own. But it's pretty much one color and I really need to emphasize those areas that are cut out. So I'm going to take some acrylic paint in black and a little tiny brush and I'm going to paint down into all those little crevices. And you really don't have to worry about it getting on the top piece too much because the Waverly White chalk paint is going to cover it up really well. And you want to paint the edges of the ghost in the black as well and also the back of the ghost. And you want to let this dry really well so that when you come in with the Waverly, it's not going to smear the black into it. But I've come in again with a tiny brush and I'm going to paint around the edges of all the black little crevices. And it does take two coats in some areas, sometimes three. It just depends on how much black you had to cover up. But it really turns out cute in the end. Now, before you say anything, I know ghosts don't have gender, that that's just silly, but I am going to dress my ghost up as if it was a girl ghost, mainly because I want more color than just the black and white. So I'm going to fashion a really simple bow from this thin ribbon that has green polka dots and purple polka dots. And I'm just going to take a piece of floral wire and twist it around the center, cut off that excess, and that just makes a really cute, simple bow. 
and I'm going to attach one of my little puffy stickers right there in the center of the bow to hide the wire, although it doesn't really show y'all. And it looks like a piece of candy. It was in cute colors. And with that, my ghost is done. For this project, I'm going to be making a garland to go around the side of my tray. I'm using these stickers that spell spooky. They came with this paper collection that I got from Echo Park. I got mine at Tuesday morning real inexpensively. I just stuck mine down to this black scrapbook paper and then I'm going in and I'm going to cut them out leaving just a little bit of margin on each side, maybe eighth of an inch all the way around. I didn't really measure, I just did what looked good to my eye because this is supposed to be a quick project. Now I'm going to take my laminator and use this laminating film and I'm going to put in all my pieces and I'm going to cut off the top and we'll save that bottom for later. And then I'm going to run it through my laminator, oh, two or three times to make sure there are no air pockets and everything is sealed really well. Then I'm going in and I'm going to cut out all of the little pieces. But again, you do want to leave a little bit of margin on each side because you don't want it to come unstuck later and peel off. Although this is really good film and it probably wouldn't do that anyhow, but I'm going to leave that little air pocket at the side. Then I'm coming in with my We Are Memory Keepers hole punch and I'm using the 1 8 inch hole and I'm going to punch a hole into each corner of my piece so that we can string it on some twine. You can see through the hole so that you can line your project up perfectly. I just have to clear the top occasionally because the paper is so thick. At the beginning and end of my swag, I'm going to have two of these rings that I got at the Dollar Tree. I just cut off the little ring part and I'm going to tie it on to my string. And then I'm going to start stringing on all of the pieces for lack of a better term. And you want to go in from the front wrap around the back and then come in to the second hole that way your string is mostly on the back part of your swag and not on the front but start at the front corner each time and go from the front around the back and to the front again i hope that makes sense y'all and i'm placing a bead those are the black beads that i did earlier the ones i decided not to use in my beaded tassel so we'll use those now I used a little hot glue at the back of the S and the Y and both of the spiders on each end just to make sure everything stays in the place where I put it. And the last thing I'm going to do is take some of those stickers that I got at Joann's and I'm just going to decorate random places on my spooky sign. And with that, this project is complete. For this project, I'm going to be using one of those 4x4 cut aparts that I showed you from the paper collection by Echo Park. I'm going to use one of these wooden planks that I got from the Dollar Tree in a package. They are 4 and a half by 4 and a half. I also have a couple of pieces of wood that was cut off the stacked books that I made. And I'm going to be gluing those together and to the back to make a stand for this project. I'm going to be using wood glue to attach my two pieces of wood together, the shorter one on the top, and then I'm going to attach it to the back of this wooden plank using hot glue and wood glue. And now I'm going in with my black acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the stand, the back, the front, all of the edges, everything in the same color. This whole project is going to take less than two minutes for me to show it to you and tell you every step. I'm going to attach this little cut apart to the front of my piece. I'm just going to apply the Mod Podge to the back in a nice even coat. This is pretty thick paper, y'all. It's double sided. And then we'll place that down in the center about an eighth of an inch in all the way around. Once we finish that, we'll put a coat of Mod Podge on the top. Let everything dry and that's it. Very simple, y'all. So this is one of those boo signs that I got at the Dollar Tree this year. They come as a pack of three, and I really do like them. They're a nice size for these type projects. But I traced mine backwards onto just a piece of printer paper, and then I'm going to make a pattern so that I can cut out my B and my exclamation mark from some scrapbook paper. Then I'm going to take my furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree in the color black and I'm just going to try and stain all of those edges 
in between the two O's and the B so that I don't have to paint them with a really tiny paintbrush and this will dry immediately and I will not have to wait. And once that is done, I'm going to go in and paint just the front part of this letter O at the bottom with the pumpkin acrylic paint. And then I'm going to paint the top O in the same green paint that I've been using, which is also acrylic, and I'm only painting the front. I let the first two colors dry really well, and now I'm starting in with the black, and I'm going to paint the front of the B in black, the exclamation point in black, and also the back part of this piece entirely in black paint. This is just black acrylic flat paint. I'm going to be tracing my letters onto the back of my scrapbook paper, the one that has the candy all over it. It's really my favorite, and it's kind of the theme of the whole tray. But the thin paper kept folding up so I took a little washi tape and I just taped everything down and then I'll draw around it with a pencil and then come back and cut out all of the pieces. To attach my pieces to my word boo I'm going to use my art glitter glue and I'm just spreading it out with a paintbrush. You can use Mod Podge and do the exact same thing. And if you're using Mod Podge, you can come back and put a coat on the top as well, and that'll make it a little more shiny. You could even do the whole word, but I really love how this looks in person. I already had this five gallon paint stirrer stick, and it is about four and a half inches long. I thought this would be the perfect stand for our piece so that it will stand up on the tear tray. And what I did was draw a line down the middle and then I indicated with my pencil where it was going to touch on the piece. And then I went in and sort of whittled out those edges and that took a long time, y'all. I'm not going to show all of it to you, but you can see it here. I cut out some areas so the glue could sink down in there and it would hold up well. And then of course I'm going in with my black acrylic paint and I'm going to paint the edges in the top and the bottom so that everything blends. We'll place some hot glue on top here in those cut places and then place on the boo sign. And with that, this project is done. For this project, I'm going to be using one of these wooden scoops that I got at Hobby Lobby in the party section. They come three to a package. I thought it would be cute to have a little candy spoon in our project since this project is all about Halloween candy and costumes. I'm going to first of all paint the scoop in the green paint that I've been using throughout this video. I gave it just a really good heavy coat on the front and the back and let it dry. And then I'm going in with my little buttons that I have here. These are one inch split balls that I got at Hobby Lobby at some point. And I'm going to paint one of them in the purple, one in the orange, and one in the black. Then I'm just going to use hot glue and I'm going to attach all three of these split balls to the top part of my scoop and just dressing it up a little bit. I wanted it to look like that I had beads stacked on top of it. It didn't get the exact look, but it turned out pretty cute. I'm pretty happy with it. And once I have everything glued down, I'm just going to add some of my puffy stickers to the scoop itself, kind of to look like the candy that would be in the scoop if you were going in an old fashioned candy store. And that For our first project, we're going to make a Grinch gnome. Y'all know that I'm basically obsessed with gnomes. To make it, we're gonna use this scallion chalk paint from Waverly, a piece of this faux fur from Joanne Fabrics. Y'all, it's so soft. One of these mini cone trees from Hobby Lobby. You get six in a pack and they're 50% off, so they're only $2 and the sleeve off this little dress that I got from Goodwill Outlet. Now, if you don't have something like this, you could use part of one of the wine bags from the Dollar Tree, or part of one of these scarves, or just some fabric and a piece of a dust mop. I'll also be using one of these pom-poms from the Dollar Tree. So the first thing I needed to do was cut down my cone by about a half an inch. It just barely fit onto my bottom tray and I didn't want it to be such a tight fit. So I used a serrated knife and cut it off. And then I'm going to use my scallion chalk paint and give it a good coat of paint. 
Now we're gonna take our fur and we are going to just kind of measure around to see how much we're gonna need. And then I found the easiest way to do this was to just kind of glue it on and then we'll cut it down after that. I used some hot glue and put it on one side and then I just kind of wrapped it around, used some more hot glue and glued it down. Once you get it to that point, you can trim it off. And with the fur being so shaggy, you can't even see the seam. I love how this turned out. For the hat, I'm going to use the sleeve off this little dress that I got from Goodwill Outlet. Now, I was being too lazy to cut this down and make a pattern, so I figured that I would just cut it and use some glue and keep playing with it until I got a hat. Now, if you don't have this, you can use fabric and use um, one of the dust mops from the Dollar Tree for the fur and make a little hat as well. You can see that I just kept playing with this. I would cut it down some. I ended up taking out that first seam and cutting it some more and then I would roll it in on itself and use some hot glue until I got that little pointed hat for the gnome. Now Actually, it didn't look bad when I was finished. I did have that seam up the back, but you don't really see it, and I thought it looked fine. Now that we've got our little hat, I'm going to take one of these little pom-poms and glue right to the bottom so that we have our Santa hat. We will slide it over the top of our Grinch head, and then I like to flop mine over, so I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place. For his nose, I'm going to use one of these half wood beads from Amazon, and I'm going to paint it with my dark green acrylic paint. I thought this would be good for his nose. We'll use a little bit of hot glue and secure it in place right under his hat, and with that, this project's finished. For our next one, I wanted to do Grinch's heart. You know, it grew three sizes that day, according to the folks in Whoville. So I'm gonna use this block heart that I got from the Dollar Tree. I like how it's shaped. And we're gonna use some more of that faux fur and a little bit of paint. I took the hanger off and I filled it in with some caulk from the Dollar Tree and let it dry. And then I sanded it down. Now we're going to use some crimson chalk paint from Waverly and I'm going to give the front and the back a really good coat of paint and leave it to dry. I didn't worry about the sides because we're going to be covering those. Once our paint is dry, I'm going to put some hot glue on the sides and then I'm going to start wrapping my fur around it. I wanted it to cover all the sides and I thought this was going to be an easier way of doing it than trying to measure it and cut it out and I was really pleased with how it turned out. Once I got it glued down, I just used my scissors and trimmed around and then I cut it down to fit on the back and this turned out perfectly. Now we're just going to take our scissors and give it a good haircut and on one side I'm going to cut it pretty close so that it will stand up. To make a little more whimsy or to give it some more detail, I'm going to use this white gel pen from Arteza and just do some doodles right around the edges just to kind of make it stand out and to give it a little something extra. Once you finish this, this project's finished. You know it wouldn't be a tear tray for the Crafting Cousins if we didn't make a bead garland. So we're going to use some of these beads and some more items to make a cute little garland for our tear tray. I'm going to use one of these round wood ornaments that I got in a pack of six from Hobby Lobby. I'll be using some of these red and white beads that came off of a garland from Walmart and then some unfinished beads that I had in my stash. We're going to use several ribbons and some white cotton twine. We're going to use this wording that I printed out on my computer. I will put a link below if you'd like to have a copy. And then we're going to use some chalk paint in scallion and crimson red. I'll also use a little bit of silver linings. So the first thing I did was lay out my beads so I knew how many I needed for my garland. I wanted it to be about 18 inches, so this is how it laid out. 
We're going to end up using seven of those unfinished beads and I wanted to paint them with my scallion color. So I add a little paint and just a tad water to a baggie and then I drop in my unfinished beads and just kind of smush them around until they're completely covered with the paint. Then we're going to pour them out onto some parchment paper and leave them to dry. While those are drying, I'm going to work on my little ornament. I cut off that ribbon, and I did save it because we'll use it a little bit later. And then I'm going to use my crimson chalk paint, and I'm going to paint the body of the ornament. I am going to paint the front and the back, and then I will let that dry. Once that's dry, I'm going to use my silver linings chalk paint and I'm going to paint the cap of the ornament and I also get those sides so that it doesn't look like raw wood. Now we're going to put our wording on our ornament. I'm just going to use a piece of carbon paper. Y'all know I love this method. If you don't have carbon paper, you could scribble on the back of it with a pencil and then trace over it and it'll also do the same thing. All I do is put down my carbon paper, I put my wording on top of it, and trace around it with my pencil. This is going to transfer it onto my project. Then I'm going to use one of those Arteza white gel pens and just fill in my letters. I love these pens. They give such a great coverage and they just pop off of these darker colors. I feel like I have more control with these than I do with paint and a paintbrush, but you can certainly use paint and a paintbrush to fill these in, or you could even um, freehand it if you have a good handwriting. Now we're going to make a tassel for our garland. I take my white twine and I wrap it around this little frame that I had about 20 times. And then I take my ribbons and I wrap those around about three times each. Now, if you don't have one of these little frames, you can use anything, some cardboard, your hand, whatever. You just want to make sure that you get it wrapped around really good for the length that you want your tassel to be. Once I get all my pieces wrapped around, I take my twine and run it up under there and I'm going to tie it into a double knot at the very top as tight as I can. I measure out about 24 inches and cut it off and then I take another piece of my ribbon and I wrap it around the top of this two times and tie it into a double knot. This is going to hold our tassel. Now we're just going to use our scissors and cut open all those little loops and then we'll trim it down and we have a tassel. Now to finish this up, I'm going to put my um, twine through a darning needle and then I just start putting my beads on. I did a pattern of red, white, green, red, white, green until I had all of those on. Now we'll take our little ornament, we're going to slide it onto the end and then tie a double knot to hold it in place. I'll trim that off and put just a little bit of hot glue to hold it in place and with that this project's finished. For our next one, this is probably our most simple one. You know we can't do a Grinch tray without a Grinch tree. I got this cute little tree at the Dollar Tree, and all we're going to do is take some thin red ribbon. I use a little bit of hot glue to secure it to the top, and then we're just going to start wrapping it around our tree. I'm going to do it at an angle, just like you would if you were putting ribbon around your Christmas tree. We just want this to be a little bit of decoration. We'll keep wrapping until we get to the bottom, and then I'm just going to use a little more hot glue to secure it into place on the bottom of our tree, and then I'll just trim it off. Now we're just going to take this and we're going to pull it over so that it bends over at the top, just like the little Grinch tree does. To finish this off, I'm going to use one of these red mini ornaments from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to use my scissors and cut off that little loop at the top, and that leaves an opening. We're going to put some hot glue in there and push it onto the end of our tree, and this one is finished. For our next project, I thought I had recorded this, but I was having trouble with my camera and I didn't get it recorded. So I'm going to show you the best I can the beginning of this. We are going to use three of these large erasers from the Dollar Tree, and we're going to use some white chalk paint from Waverly. 
We'll use these jot markers in red and green. I got these from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use some leftover greenery and this red glittered ball that I had and some red ribbon. I'll use my hot glue and then I'm going to use a ruler and a Zacto knife. So the first thing I had to do with my three erasers was cut them down. You can see that they are at an angle at the end and I wanted them to be straight. So I just line it up on my mat there and then I put my ruler on top of it and use my Zacto knife and it takes about three passes and it cuts through this. I did have to trim it up some and it's not always completely straight, but I was okay with that because it gets that wavy look like pages. I trimmed it up and then I used my Waverly white chalk paint and I painted all sides of all three erasers and left them to dry. Once they were dry, I just used some hot glue and I glued them on top of each other in a stack, just like you would with your regular book stacks. Now that everything is dry, I'm going to use some of my Waverly chalk paint in silver linings and I'm just going to brush it onto the ends of my book stack and on one side. And this is just going to represent those pages. I love how it was kind of wavy looking and it really did end up looking like some little books. This um, silver linings chalk paint is just enough contrast to give it that book look. Now that that's dry, I'm going to use my pencil and I'm going to write on each one. On one I'm going to put stink, the middle one stank, and the last one stunk. You know, like the Grinch says. I like to do it in pencil first so that if I mess up, I can erase it. And then I'm going to take my red permanent marker and I'm going to go over the stink and the stunk. And I'll use my green permanent marker and write in the stank. To make a bow for this and decorate it, I'm going to use a little piece of my red ribbon there. I wrap it around and I tie it into a shoestring bow. I like to make a knot first so it'll stay in place. And then we're just going to trim off those ends. Now I'm going to use a little bit of greenery that I had left over from other projects and I just kind of cut it down, figure out where I want it to be placed. And then I'll use a little bit of hot glue on it and glue it right up under my bow. Once we get that in place, we're going to take that little ball and glue it down and this project will be finished. Our next project is actually going to be three in one. I wanted to make some cute little signs for my tear tray and I thought that these pieces that I had would be perfect for that. I'm going to use this little house that was sent to me by my friend Evelyn. I'm going to use this little block that I got from Goodwill Outlet. It's just like a piece of 2 by 4 And I'm going to use this little sign that I got from Dollar General at the end of the season for 90% off. I'll also be using these designs that I printed on some Hippo water slide decal paper. Y'all, I love this paper. Hippo is not sponsoring this video. I just really like how you can use this paper to make professional looking signs. You print it off with a regular inkjet printer and then you're going to use some clear acrylic spray. You spray on it three times and let it dry in between and it makes the perfect medium for your projects. Once this is done, all you have to do is cut it off and then put it onto your signs and y'all, it actually looks like it was painted on. Now I'm going to put a link down in the description box below to these designs if you would like to have a copy and I'll also put a link to the water slide decal paper over on Amazon if you would like to pick some of that up. So the first thing I'm going to do is clean off my little signs. I used my heat gun and I took off as much as I could possibly get off, but y'all, these things were stubborn. I got as much of this paper off as I could, but I ended up having to sand the rest of it off. And then on my little house, I pulled off the twine and I finally ended up popping off that gather thing. This thing did not want to come off. Once I had my signs as clean as I could get them, I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint and give them a really good coat. Now I did paint this whole block 
on my house I only painted the front and then on the other little sign I only painted the inside I gave them one and a half coats and left them to dry I'm using the white because I needed a white background white doesn't show up on this water slide decal paper because your computer can't print white so you need a white background to get that once our paint is dry, I'm going to use my sanding block and go over this um, little block that I had here. I was hoping to pull that red paint back out, but it wasn't working. So I just grabbed my Waverly chalk paint in crimson and a stiff brush and did some distressing on it. I went back over those edges and put some on the back of it and on the sides just to make this look distressed and give that red back to it. Now on my house, I'm going to use the red and paint the sides and the top. I want all of these pieces to have some of that red color on it or to be red and white. And then on my little sign, I'm just going to paint the frame on the inside, the outside, and the edges. Now that our paint is dry, we can apply our designs. I'm going to take my designs that I printed out on my water slide paper and cut those out. And then once I get them cut out like this, we're going to go around and we're going to do some fussy cutting. Now, you don't have to be too particular with your fussy cutting. It says to leave a quarter of an inch around it. Um, and I tried, but if it's a little close, that really doesn't matter. I just didn't want to have a whole square of that clear paper I wanted it to look more like it was part of my wood and the more of that that you can take off the better you are but now you can see I did not go right around each piece of this I wasn't that worried about it once you get them cut out you're gonna take a shallow bowl with some water in it and you put each piece in there and let it soak for about 30 seconds it might take you know 45 but it doesn't take long once you can feel that top part start moving around, you're going to put it onto your surface, hold one side down with your fingers, and then slide that white paper out from under it with your other fingers. Once you do that, you just kind of pat it down with your fingers, and then you're going to use a little bit of paper towel and just pat on top of it to get the water out. Once you do that, you're going to see that it starts almost melding to the background and it really looks like it was painted on there. Y'all, I love these so much. Now on this little house, you probably noticed that I left the top of it blank. I did that because I wanted to add a wreath. So I'm going to use a piece of this pine garland um, ties that you get from the Dollar Tree and I form it into a circle. And now we're going to make a little bow. Now we're using that ribbon that we cut off that ornament. We're going to hold one side of it over our fork. We're going to pull the other side around the back and then you pull it over the top of your ribbon and through the center tine of your fork until you get it pulled across. Then you're going to pull it up through the back and come over the top and then take that other tail and you're going to tie this into a double knot. When you do that, it's going to make a little bow. This is the best way to make these tiny bows, y'all. They turn out perfect every time. Once you get your double knot in there, you're just going to slide it off the end of your fork and there's your little bow. We'll trim off those ends and then we're going to use a little hot glue to glue this up to the top of our wreath right there where it met. And then we'll use a little hot glue on the back of this at the top and the bottom and we'll glue it onto our house and with that, these are finished. For our last project, I wanted to make a directional sign. So we're going to use three of these mini craft sticks that I get from Walmart, one of these wood slices that I got in a pack from Hobby Lobby, one of these skewers that came from the Dollar Tree. I'm going to use an awl to poke a hole, but you could use anything. I'm going to use some Waverly chalk paint in scallion, crimson, and white. 
and I'm going to end up using my graphic illustration markers and I also use an Arteza white gel pen. So the first thing I wanted to do was paint my little sticks. But after I started painting it, I realized that I needed to cut these into arrows and it would be better to do this before I painted it. So I grabbed my pencil and I just traced out a little arrow on one end and I used my scissors and cut that out. And then I cut the other end straight. These are really small and they cut well with just a small pair of scissors. Once I get them cut out, I use my crimson chalk paint from Waverly and I paint two of them. I make sure to paint the front, the back, and all the sides. And then I'm going to use my scallion chalk paint and paint the third one. While those are drying, I'm going to use some white chalk paint and paint my skewer. I had already broke it down, but I didn't get it quite short enough. We'll end up cutting it a little more later. Now that those are dry, I'm going to write on them. On the green one, I want to put Grinch's layer. So I use my pencil and kind of sketch it out. And then I use my pen and go over it. I like to use the pencil just in case I mess up, then I can correct it. Whereas if I just use my pen, I would have to paint over it and wait. On the red ones, I'm going to write Whoville on one and I will write Mount Crumpet on the other one. I also used my pencil on that and then I used my Arteza white gel pen to fill it in because I felt like that it popped off this red a lot better than the black did. You just want to make sure that one of your signs says Whoville, one says Mount Crumpet, and one says Grinch's Lair. Then I'm going to take a little bit of white chalk paint and my brush and I just kind of hit those edges and make it look like the snow has settled there when it snowed. Now I'm going to use my awl and punch a hole into my wood slice. This was real soft and it was easy to do. Then I'm going to put a little bit of hot glue in it and stick my um, skewer down into it. I figured out how tall I needed it to be and cut it off and then I just touched up the end. And I'm going to use a little bit of my white chalk paint and I'm going to paint the base of this just to make it look like snow has fallen on it. You can see on the edges I kind of make it thicker. Then we'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue our signs on. I like to make them wonky. And once you do that, this project will be finished. So I'm going to try and give you a quick rundown of most of the supplies that I used. I use these wooden beads, it even says beaded garland, I got it from Walmart for $3.98. One of these mini ornaments that I got at Walmart, they were $1.98, they have six on the card, I'm using the word that says joy. This plate that I got from the Dollar General, it says Merry Christmas and it only cost $1, it's 8 inches in diameter. This cute little red ceramic truck, I actually got it from the Dollar Tree last year. This sign that I got from the Dollar General, it originally cost a dollar and I got it on clearance. One of these brush bottle trees that I got from the Dollar Tree. Some galvanized numbers that I got from the Dollar Tree, they are about two inches tall. This scrap piece of two by four, it is about three and a half inches tall, which is the same thing as the width. One small wooden crate that I got at the Dollar Tree. Some craft sticks. Some scrap piece of wood, if you don't have any that looks like this, I had just cut these off of a 2x4. You could also use some tumbling tower blocks from the Dollar Tree. One of these miniature wreaths, I got these at Target in the dollar spot, $1 for the package of three. One of these place card holders that I got at Hobby Lobby. Every other week, they put all of the wedding stuff 50% off. Some gift tissue paper that I got from the Dollar General for a dollar. Some baker's twine, I think mine came from Hobby Lobby, but they also sell it at the Dollar Tree. These cute little red trucks, these came from Target in the dollar spot, $1 for the set of four. A cute gift box that I got at the Dollar General, they come in a package of two for a dollar. Some of these stickers from Hobby Lobby. Some letter tiles from the Dollar Tree. 
I have these two ribbons that have trucks on them, the little red trucks. This one came from the Dollar General for a dollar, and the other one came from Hobby Lobby. I will be using both of these in some part. And then I just pulled all of the red and green combination ribbons that I thought would work for this tear tray, and I used some of them and some of them I did not, but I used lots of ribbon. Waverly chalk paint in the colors Fern, White, and Crimson. I'm going to be using some stickers from this paper collection by Echo Park called Christmas Time. I got mine at Tuesday morning and it was really inexpensive. You could also use stick on letters, your Cricut, or you could just write it in with a paint pen. And finally, I used some Mod Podge and some hot glue to keep it all together. I think this little red truck is cute in and of itself, just like it is. But for Christmas, we have to zhuzh it up a little bit. You know we can't leave it plain. So I'm going to take one of these brush bottle trees from the Dollar Tree, the smaller one, and put a little hot glue on it and glue it right into the back of my truck here. Every red pickup truck needs a Christmas tree at Christmas. Then I'm going to take one of these little wreaths that I got from Target and we'll glue that right to the front of the grill. I personally know a lot of people in South Alabama who do that during Christmas. And to decorate the doors of the truck, I'm just going to take a couple of these stickers that has the holly berries and some red stones, and I'm going to place them on the doors on each side of the truck, giving it just a little more glam. I'm taking one of these little pine stems that I got from Hobby Lobby. They are back where the minis are, and I'm going to cover the top of my truck here. That will be our greenery or our swag on our truck as we go along because if we're decorating for a parade we need lots of judging up so we'll get that placed around the back of the pickup then I'm taking my baker's twine and I'm going to make two tiny bows and then I'm going to glue them into the corner on each side of the back of the pickup truck and nothing says Christmas more than presents so I'm going to take some of these buttons that I got at Hobby Lobby they come in a package of four for $2.99, but they're about 66% off right now. And we'll cut the shanks off the back of those. And then I'm just going to glue them towards the front of the side on my garland here on both sides. And then I found this cute Santa that was also some of the buttons from Hobby Lobby. I cut the shank off the back and I'm placing him in the center of the back there. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. The only thing I didn't add that I wanted to was those cute little tiny Christmas bulbs that they have at Hobby Lobby in the stickers. I need to buy some. So my idea for this project is that it will hold a photo, maybe your menu for the holidays or a recipe that is special to you. So the first thing I did was I painted this block in white Waverly chalk paint, but you can skip that step and you'll see why later on. Then I'm just going to cut apart this little gift box and I'm just going to be using one of them. And then I use my paper trimmer to trim it down further so that it will fit on this little block of wood. It ends up with just a little bit of paint showing at the top and the bottom. That's when I decided I didn't like it being all white and I decided I would paint the whole thing in the crimson red chalk paint by Waverly. And now I'm just using Mod Podge. I'm going to place it on the back of my paper because this paper is nice and thick and we'll let that soak in. And then I'll center it on my block of wood and just smooth that down and put something heavy on it and let it dry for about an hour or so. You want it to be nice and dry. Then I'm finding the center of my block here and I'm going to start stringing on the beads very similar to what they were when they were on the beaded garland. And then I'm going to make a really simple bow out of this ribbon from Hobby Lobby. I'll tie a piece of green ribbon around the middle Cut off that excess, give it a little glue, a little trimming. And I'm using my simple drill here and I'm just going to drill a hole right down in the middle of the top of the block where I've measured earlier. Then I'm going to put some glue on my photo holder and then I'm going to place it down into the block and that will hold it in place. 
We'll add our bow right here to the base of everything, tie it tight, cut off the excess, add a little glue, and with that, this project is done. For this project, I'm going to be using this little crate from the Dollar Tree and turn it into a set of mini stacked books. But I didn't like the way the end looks, so I'm going to cut six of these jumbo sized popsicle sticks to fit the end. I'm just using my squaring tool to make sure everything's nice and straight. And I actually used my Tim Holtz scissors just to cut the ends. If you take it slowly, it doesn't splinter and it works perfectly. I didn't have to get out any heavy duty tools. I'm going to use wig glue from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to place it here on the end and then I will take my tongue depressors, popsicle sticks, whatever you would like to call them and line them up with the sides where the lines are on the crate to look like the book pages. And you need to space them. You have to play with it a little bit. And the craft stick that I used to spread out that glue nice and flat, I just attached it on the inside and that just covers up more of those openings. And of course, for the other side, I did the exact same thing. And then you want to let this project dry for quite some time. It helps to put something heavy on those sides. And once it was dry, I came in with a coat of my Waverly chalk paint in the color white. And I just gave it a good, nice coat all the way around the sides and the top of the piece. And once that was dry, I used a little painter's tape and I'm going to tape it off here at the bottom. And then I'm going to come in with the green color, which is called Fern, and give it two really good coats just to be the spine of the book at the bottom. And then for the top, I'm going to paint what would be the spine and what would be the cover of our book in the Waverly chalk paint in the color Crimson. This did take two good coats for coverage. Now I'm going to take some ribbon and I'm going to attach it around the side of the crate. It wasn't wide enough for my taste, so what I'm going to do is cut two pieces that will go all the way around. Then I'm going to remove those wires in this ribbon because I don't need those. And I just attach it with a little hot glue, one and then the other one I place right beside it and glue it down. And once I get all of that in place, I'm going to take my truck ribbon and put it right down the middle of those two pieces and attach it to the side. I'm going to make a really simple bow to go on top. I'm doing a four loop bow out of the plaid and I'm using floral wire to secure it around the middle. Then I'm going to place another piece of ribbon on top out of the truck ribbon and we'll just twist that wire around it as well. I'm only doing two loops for this one. And I trim up my ends and dovetail them, cut off that excess wire. We'll use a little hot glue, place it right here to the top of our book. And there's just one more embellishment I need and that's to attach one of those little trucks right to the center. Now the only thing left to do is to decide what do we want our books to be entitled. Well, I'm using these stickers and they say like, I love presents and I love Christmas and very merry. And if you don't have stickers like this, you can just write it in with a paint pen or you could use your Cricut and cut some letters. For this project, I'm just going to be dressing up that plate that I bought from the Dollar General. I'm going to take those two pieces of wood and join them with wood glue, let that dry, and then give it a good coat of the white Waverly chalk paint. And I'm also going to be using one of these jumbo giant sticks that I got at Walmart. You can see the difference in a regular tongue depressor and these. I cut off one end even. I just used my scissors for that. And then I'm going to paint it in the white Waverly chalk paint as well. This will serve to make a stand for the piece. I'm taking some ribbons, all of my favorites that I've used on this project so far, and I'm cutting five inch pieces. I'm going to place them on an X as I go. And I'm just choosing random colors, the ones with the trucks, the greens, and the reds. And of course, I used the plaid as my base. We'll add some skinny ribbon in, in the red and the green. And then I'm going to cut off a piece to tie around the middle and secure that knot. 
cut off the excess, and then we'll flip it over and do a lot of fluffing. And then I just start hacking at it. Y'all know how I am about this. I want the bottom ones to be longer than the top ones and kind of work my way down towards the front. I always cut mine a little bit longer than I need it because it's easier at this point to take it off than it is to add it on. And then I get out one of these little garland ties that I got at Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to fold it in the middle and cut it in two and then just kind of wrap it around each other and make a piece kind of like a little garland to go at the top and then I'm just going to place a little glue right there in the middle we'll place down our bow and center it I know it's just a little something extra but you know Christmas is all about the extra this is a candle ring that I got from the Dollar Tree and I've been hacking on it for a couple of years now I'm going to add some of these holly leaves at the back just to give a little more depth and color. And then once we get it like we want it, we're going to place some glue at the top of the plate and center our bow there. And then I decided I would add some of those holly berries right in the middle since the truck is a deeper red. Then I'm gluing this jumbo size stick to my little holder. I'm going to cut it off at the top because we don't need it quite that long. And then I'm just going to place a little glue on the back, glue it to my plate, and my plate will stand on its own. And that completes this very simple project. To make my beaded garland, the first thing I'm going to do is start with the tassel. I'm using some baker's twine and my Cricut tool, and I'm just going to tape it right here to the top of my Cricut tool so that it's out of the way. If you don't have one of these little tools, you can use some cardboard and do the same thing. But then I get started, and I'm going to wrap it about 30 times around this tool to make our little tassel. And when I'm finished, I'm going to come in, remove the tape at the top, take that piece of baker's twine at the top, and pull it into a knot, tie it really tight around my string. Then I'll go and cut the end of the tassel and pull everything together. And I always pull everything tight across my hand, and I take another piece of baker's twine and I tie it, oh, three quarters to half an inch from the top and pull that really tight. And then once you do that, you want to come in and give it kind of a haircut. Make everything nice and even at the end. Do lots of trimming to get it like you want it. And that's pretty much how our tassel looks. I'm going to take 18 inches of these beads and I cut it just a little bit below that because I'm just going to leave them strung. They look so nice and pretty. There's no use to restring them. And once I remove the ones I don't want, I just come in with my tassel and I tie it into the knot at the bottom. Really simple stuff. I'm not making this garland complicated at all. I'm not even doing any painting this time. Now let's take one of those little trucks and I'm going to remove it from the package. But before I apply it, let's go ahead and put on the word joy, this little ornament. I'm just tying it on the opposite end, giving it a couple of good knots. And then we're going to decorate it further by making a really simple bow out of this ribbon that I got from Hobby Lobby. I'm just going to use some of this cord around the middle to make it look cute and we'll tie that off. I'm also going to secure it with some glue because it does slide around and it kind of lets go. So I'm going to trim that up and I'll glue it right down onto our beaded garland right above the word joy. I'm just using a little hot glue and that just judges it up just a little bit more. And then we'll trim it up. And finally, we'll add our little red truck right down to the tassel. And that'll hide the little knot at the top and dress everything up. And with that, this project is pretty much complete. Really simple, but it adds a lot of punch and impact. For this project, I'm going to be using this sign that I got at the Dollar General on clearance, and I'm going to remove all of the backing, well, as much as I could. I used my hair dryer to release it, but it was really difficult to get off the front. It ended up, I came back and sanded it, and that seemed to work a whole lot better. And I couldn't get everything off, but that's okay. We can still paint it and later come back and attach our tissue paper with Mod Podge to the front. And 
that's what I'm doing right now. I'm going to paint it. I gave it two good coats of white Waverly chalk paint. I painted this entire piece, all sides and all bare wood. And once it was dry, I came in with some Mod Podge and I coated it on the back first just to seal it. And then I'm also coating it here on the front and I'm placing down that tissue paper, smoothing it down. I also used some Saran Wrap and my brayer just to make sure we got all the bubbles out or at least as much as possible. And then once I got that like I wanted it, I cut off the excess, let it dry and then I come in with some sandpaper and I'm going to try and take off all that excess. That proved to be a little difficult. Maybe I use too much glue, who knows? Usually this works really well, but I also use my detail scissors for any problem areas. The next thing I'm going to do is use my hot glue and place on the two and the five. Although I moved mine up quite a bit, it wasn't enough in the end, so you might want to check your spacing even more than I did. And yes, you could paint the two and the five. It will accept chalk paint, and you could paint it any color you want. I'm going to place the D, E, and C in these tiles up at the top, so December 25th. Here at the bottom, I'm using some Dollar Tree greenery, and I'm just going to give it a little more color and depth and place on a few of those berries right in the center there. And for the crowning touch, I'm going to place our last little button here on the top, the little red truck. And with that, this project is complete. For this project, we're going to use one of these little wood planks from the Dollar Tree. I had already cut a piece off of this one for another project, but that's fine because this is actually a little longer than I want, so it'll work out. We're going to use some of these wooden letters from Dollar General. I've already taken out the ones that I need. We're going to use an S and a W and an N, but mine didn't have any N, so we're going to actually use a Z on its side. We're going to use one of these snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. This lettering that I printed out from the computer, but you can do it freehand. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white. And I'm showing you a graphic illustration pen, but I actually used a white gel pen and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing I'm going to do is paint that little wood plank with my ink color and I do paint the front the back and those little sides I just like for my projects to have a really finished look and then we're going to paint our little letters now for the letters I am using the white in the Waverly chalk paint and I'm only painting the top and the sides of these because we'll glue them down so you won't see the back now I want to put my lettering on there. I just scribble on the back of it with a pencil, lay it on my project and trace over it. And it's going to give me a really faint outline. Now I can see it to fill it in. So then I take my Waverly um, gel pen. This is one of those white gel pens and I fill it in. Now again, you can totally do this freehand. Now I'm going to lay my lettering out so that I can figure out how I want it to look. And then we're going to figure out which size of snowflake that we need. I'll press my snowflake down and then we're just going to use a little bit of hot glue on the back of our letters and glue those into place. And once we do that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use this little block that I got from Goodwill. I love picking these up anytime that I see them. And we're going to use a couple of these little wooden mitten stickers from the Dollar Tree. We'll use some Waverly chalk paint. I only end up using the ink. A Arteza white gel pen. Some of this sweater that I have been using for other projects all through the season and my glue gun and some glue sticks. 
So the first thing I did was take my heat gun and try to remove this paper from the front of this. Now I found out I really didn't have to do that because it had a thick coat of Mod Podge on it, but I wasn't sure about that and I didn't want it to buckle, so I did clean as much of it off as I could. Then I took my Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're going to completely cover our block. I do paint the front, the back, and all the sides because I like for my projects to look the same all over and then we're going to leave it to dry. Now we're going to work on those little mittens. I always take those little stickers off the back. That's just me. And I'm going to take part of this sweater and cover it. I decided I wanted to use that ribbed edge there on the edge of the glove. I think it'll make it look more finished. So I just take a little bit of hot glue and I put it all over my glove. And then I press it down so that I have the top part in the edge of that sweater. Now on this next one, notice that I'm putting it the same way. I shouldn't have done that. I should have flipped it so I end up having to do another one after this but you know you live and you learn once we get these glued down we're just going to take our scissors and trim it out and then we're going to have two adorable little mittens now I'm going to take that block and I'm going to use my Arteza white gel pen and write burr on it I did trace my letters out with a pencil first just so that I would have my dimensions and know where I wanted them to be placed. Um, but you don't have to do that. I've just found that it's easier to change it if you have to if you do it in pencil first. Now we'll place our mittens down and I decided to take a little piece of yarn just to connect my mittens. So I glue one end to the back of one and then I will figure out how long I want it and glue the other end and trim that off. Then we will attach these to our block with some hot glue and once we do that this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use a salt shaker. I got mine from the thrift store and one of these wooden knobs that I got from Joanne Fabrics. Some faux snow, some leftover greenery, some ribbon of choice, this came from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink and white, some Waverly chalk paint in pumpkin, the very end of this little skewer, my permanent black markers, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So the first thing we're going to do is our painting so that it can dry. I'm painting my little wooden bead with my white chalk paint. Now, if you don't have one of these wooden knobs, you could use a bead. I know it has a hole all the way through it, but your hat should cover that. Then we're going to take the top of our salt shaker and we are going to paint it with our Waverly chalk paint in ink and leave it to dry. I'm going to use my scissors and cut off just the end of this skewer so it can be my nose and then I'm going to paint it with my pumpkin chalk paint. It was a little tedious but we got it done. Now I'm going to take my awl that I got from Hobby Lobby in the fabric department and I'm just going to punch a little hole right there in the front that I can put the nose in. I like this awl because it will punch holes in all kinds of materials. Now we'll put a little hot glue on there and then glue our nose to the front. I'm going to hold my hat in place so I can see how I need to do his little face and use my permanent marker and draw in a couple of eyes and then use some dots to make a mouth on here. Now I'll take that um, faux snow and I'm just going to pour some into my salt shaker. You put as much or as little as you would like and then I'm going to cut up a little bit of this frosted greenery and drop in there on top of it. We'll use a little bit of hot glue right around the edge of our salt shaker and glue our head on and then we're going to use our hot glue to glue our hat on kind of at an angle. Give him a little bit of a jaunty look. I'm going to take some ribbon, I'll trim that off, and then I'm just going to tie it right there around his neck to give him a little scarf. I'm going to tie it in a double knot, and then I'll trim it off, and this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use some Waverly chalk paint in ink, one of these wooden tags from the Dollar General, one of these sparkly glitter stickers from the Dollar Tree, and a little bit of black and white baker's twine. 
The first thing we're going to do is paint our little wooden tag. I paint the front, the back, and the sides with my ink chalk paint and leave it to dry. This one is going to be so simple as most of these are. It's just something cute that you can use as filler on your trays. Once this is dry, we're going to cut off a little piece of our baker's twine. I'm going to fold it in half and then feed it through my little hole. We'll take the ends and feed it through the loop that it made and pull it tight. I'm going to put just a little bit of hot glue there at the base and this is going to help it hold so it doesn't come loose. Then we're going to trim it up. The last thing we have to do is decide which one of our snowflakes we want to use. Stick it down and this project will be finished. For this project, you're going to need some wooden beads, some yarn, one of those wooden snowflake ornaments from Dollar Tree, some Waverly white chalk paint, and a black permanent marker. The first thing I'm going to do is paint my little ornament from the Dollar Tree. I'm using my Waverly white chalk paint, and I gave it a really good coat on the front and the back. And then I took my brush and just kind of dabbed down in between those edges. I was trying to cover it as much as I could and I left it to dry. When I started taking out my beads, I realized that I was going to need a couple of larger beads to form a snowman. So I grabbed four beads that were about a size bigger in some unfinished beads. I put them on a skewer and then I'm going to use my Waverly white chalk paint and paint them. I only end up using two of these though. While that is drying, I'm going to make my tassel. I took a little book and I wrapped my yarn around it about 30 times. Now, I'm using a size that I thought would make a good tassel. You use whatever works for you. I'm going to cut off a little piece of yarn and lay it to the side. And then I take the tail of my yarn and I run it up under what I had wrapped on the book. I pull it to the top, tie it into a double knot, and slip it off my book. Now I'm going to take that little piece of yarn that we cut off and I'm going to wrap it around the top of this about six or seven times and tie it into a double knot. This is going to give me the top of my tassel. I'll trim all that off and then we're going to cut open those little loops at the bottom and I'm going to trim it down. You make it however long you want your tassel to be. I'll cut off a long piece of my yarn. You'd rather have too much than not enough. And then I'm just going to thread it into a darning needle to make it easier to put my beads on. I put on three of my little black beads. Then I'm going to put on one of those bigger white beads and then two more of my smaller white beads. That's going to give me a little snowman. I put on three more of my black beads. And then I'm going to start a pattern of doing white, black, white, black. You do this for as long as you want your garland to be. I think I used about 18 beads in this, but you use whatever works best for you. Once I got it as long as I wanted it, I put on three more of my black beads. Then I'm going to put on two of my smaller white beads and one of my larger white beads. And then I'll put on three more black beads. And that's my garland. Now we're going to thread that little ornament onto the end of this and tie it into a knot so that it will hold it. And that's going to be the end of our garland there. I think I tied like three knots in there just to make sure that it didn't come off. We'll trim off our thread and that will be it. Now I'm going to take those little beads we put on there and I'm going to decorate them to be a snowman. I grabbed a orange um, colored pencil that I had and drew in a little nose. Then I used my permanent marker and I made a couple little eyes and a dotted mouth. I put three little dots in the center one for some buttons. And then I decided that I probably should glue these together so that his head doesn't twist around to the back of his body. Now I'm going to take a little piece of baker's twine and I decided he needed a scarf. So I just tie that around his little neck and then I thought, yep, probably need to glue that too. So I put a little more glue there and then we're going to trim those ends off and he's going to have a cute little scarf. I love that little snowman. We're going to flip this around and we're going to do it one more time. We're going to draw in his little nose then we'll take our marker, make some eyes, dot in a little mouth. We'll put three little dots for buttons. 
Then we're going to go ahead and glue this together. I glue those bottom two together. I glue his head to the top one. And then I cut off the twine, but I decided I probably should go ahead and glue his head to his body. That might make it easier. And then I tie the twine around there in a double knot and trim it off. And with that, this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little signs that I get from Dollar General when they're 90% off. They make great little signs for your tear trays. Some of this wording that I printed off from my computer. Some snowflakes from the Dollar Tree. Some Waverly chalk paint in ink and my Arteza white gel pen. I'm going to be using the back of my sign for the front, so I take off the twine and the little sticker, then I pry up that staple that's on there and sand it down smooth. Now we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're going to give our sign a really good coat. I do paint the inside, the outside, the front, the back, all the sides. I always like for my projects to look the same all the way around. Now I'm going to put my wording onto my sign. I wanted to have this really pretty fancy font, so I printed it off on my computer. Then I just take a pencil and I scribble all over the back of it. I lay it onto my sign and then I trace over the letters and that transfers them onto my project. Now it is really light, but I can see it. So then I'm gonna take my Arteza white gel pen and I just fill in my lettering. Now I realize if you have a cutting machine, you can do this with a cutting machine, but we always like to show those who don't have one how they can make the same kind of projects. The last thing we're going to do is add some snowflakes to the front of this and then this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little buckets from the Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in ink, some spackling from the Dollar Tree, a little bit of tape, some of these white pom-poms, a piece of this white cloth from the Dollar Tree, this little chalkboard sign from the Dollar Tree, and my white Arteza gel pen. So the first thing I want to do was fill in the little hole at the top of my sign. So I'm going to put a piece of tape on the back and then fill it in with a little bit of my spackling and let it dry. Now I'm going to use my Waverly chalk paint in ink and I painted in that little hole at the front and then I'm going to paint the back and the sides of my sign to give it a uniform look. Now we're going to take that cloth and cut off a little piece to stuff in our bucket. Then we will add our little pom-poms on top so that we have some snowballs in our bucket. The last thing to do is to write on our little sign. I took my Arteza white gel pen and I'm writing in snowballs five cent. And y'all, I even freehanded this. I know that it surprises you. <laughs> but once we get that wrote in, this little project is finished. For this project, we're going to use some of these little wooden snowmen shaped from Dollar Tree, some Waverly chalk paint in white and ink, a black permanent marker, and some black and white baker's twine. So the first thing we're going to do is paint the bottom part of our little shapes here with our white Waverly chalk paint and let them dry. Now again, this is one of those really simple projects that you don't have to do much to, but make adorable fillers for your tear tray. Once we get the bottom painted with the white, we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint in ink and we're going to paint the top of each one of these and then we'll set them aside and let them completely dry. Yeah, I was trying really hard not to get the black paint onto the white snowman. Now that they're dry, I'm going to take my permanent marker and I put two little eyes and a little dotted mouth on the top and then three little buttons on each belly of my snowman. Then I'm going to take an orange colored pencil and draw in a little nose. And the last thing we're going to do is take some of our baker's twine and tie it right around his neck into a little knot, trim it off to give him a scarf. Once we get all three of these done, this simple little project will be finished. For 
For this project, we're going to use one of these little foam star foam trees from Hobby Lobby, a piece of this fabric from the automotive department at the Dollar Tree, and my glue gun and some glue sticks. So when I was looking at my tray, it had a little area that needed something. So I decided to use one of these little foam trees and cut off the bottom so it wouldn't be too tall. Then I'm going to cut a little piece of this fabric that I get from the automotive section at the Dollar Tree. And we're just going to glue it around this. Now, y'all, I could have made this a lot easier on myself if I would have made a pattern first. But I was being stubborn and wanted to hurry. So I just end up cutting it up. You know, I'll cut pieces off. I glue it down. I wrap it some more until it completely fits around there. This fabric is really forgiving. So you don't see this seam that I'm making here at the back. So I'm just going to keep cutting it and gluing until I have a little snow covered cone tree to fit on my tray. Once you get this glued down the way you like it, this simple little project is finished. Hey y'all, it's Trish. Today we are going to decorate my tear tray for Valentine's Day. Our first project, we're going to use this heart that I got from the Dollar Tree. And we are also going to use some Waverly chalk paint in white, a pencil, and some of these rub-on transfers that also came from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was take the paper off the front of this. It was pretty much peeled off anyway, but I finished peeling it off and then I sanded it down to smooth it out. Now we're just going to take our Waverly chalk paint and give it a good coat of paint and leave it to dry. Once our paint is dry, I took my ruler and I just made some marks across this, kind of like shiplap. I'm just wanting to give it some character. I didn't measure these. I just kind of eyeballed them and I thought it turned out fine. And then I just used my finger and I smudge them to soften them out. Now I'm going to take my pencil and go around the edges of this and I just kind of scribble some on and then I smudge it out with my finger and this just gives it some really nice soft distressing. Once we are finished with that, I'm going to take that rub on transfer that came from the Dollar Tree and I figure out which pieces of it I want to put on my heart. I cut those out and then I lay it down on top of the heart where I want it to go and I use my little spatula thing. I got this from Cricut but you could use a credit card, anything you have with a straight edge and I rub over it really good and then lift it up and it leaves the transfer on the piece. I love these y'all they are so pretty and y'all know how much I love mixed media and this gives it that same feel it layers up our wording on here and I can layer up the textures and I just love how it came out once I got the major pieces down that I really wanted on there I just kept going back and cutting out other little pieces and filling in those little blank areas I didn't want to leave anything with a big hole it doesn't matter if there's some white showing but I didn't want any really big holes so we're just going to keep filling this in with all those little pieces and then I found that I had not gotten all of the transfer off of this one piece so I grabbed it and started taking those little pieces that were left on there and filling in some of those little areas that were left. For our next project, we're just going to use some sticks that I went outside and picked up out of my yard, some foam sheets in red and white. You could also use felt for this. And then a heart and an arrow end that I just traced out onto a piece of paper and our glue gun. The first thing I did was cut out my pattern and then I'm going to trace four on each color. Four of the hearts and four of the arrow ends. Now if you're not going to make four or you're just wanting to use one color, what you need is two hearts and two arrow ends for each arrow that you're going to make. I trace these out and then I cut them out. 
Once you get them cut out, this is so easy. We're just gonna put some hot glue on one side and then we put our stick down into it and then press the other side on top of it, sandwiching the stick into in between it. You wanna make sure you press it really good. Now we're gonna take our heart and do the same thing. I put some hot glue on it, put my stick down and then put another heart on top of it and sandwich it in. I love these little arrows, y'all, especially when the stick is a little bit curved. I don't know. I just think it gives it more character. We'll do one more in white. I actually ended up doing four, two red and two white. Two of them was a little bit shorter than the other two. And y'all, I just love these so much. How cute are these little arrows? For our next project, we're going to use one of these little mini mason jars. I got this from the Dollar Tree. We're going to use a aisle to uh, punch a hole in the top. I'm gonna cut out this little tag that I made and print it on some of my craft paper. We're gonna use one of these little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree, some twine, and then my hole punch to punch a hole with. The first thing we're gonna do is go ahead and punch a hole in our heart because we want to be able to hang this in our jar. I'm gonna thread my twine through there and tie it into a knot and then trim off that end and then I'll cut off a piece of my twine. I'm gonna take my awl and punch a hole in the top of my lid and then I'm gonna um, thread that twine through there and then hang my heart down. And you can see, I pulled it up where you couldn't see, but I was just seeing how far it hung down. I didn't want it to touch the bottom. I figured out how low it needed to hang and then I'm gonna tie a triple knot into my twine so it don't fall through and trim that off. I'll put a little bit of hot glue in there just to hold it in place. Now I'm gonna take my little tag and punch a hole in it and then I cut my twine and I'm going to wrap it around the top of this two or three times and tie it into a double knot. Then we will thread on our little tag and tie another knot and trim it off and this project will be finished. For this project, we're going to use one of these little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree this printable that I made and printed out. I'll put a copy to it down below if you would like to have it. We're going to use some Mod Podge, some Waverly chalk paint in white, one of these tumbling tower blocks, and some acrylic paint in melted chocolate. Now you can probably see that I was trying to stain this with one of my stain markers, but it didn't have enough ink left in it to completely stain this, and I didn't like how it was covering anyway. So I just grabbed some melt chocolate or melted chocolate acrylic paint, mixed it with some water, and used it for a stain. We are going to paint this on and let it dry. Once that was dry, I took my white Waverly chalk paint and my chippy brush and I just do some distress painting all over this. I used a pretty heavy hand. I wanted to be able to see the brown, but I wanted more of the white on there. Then we're going to let this dry. Now I'm going to take my little printable that I made and I want it to fit the top of this heart. Now this heart has these beveled edges on it so you can see I'm kind of pressing it around so that I can feel that edge. And then I'm gonna take my pencil and just kind of scribble around that edge just to give me a cutting line. This may not be perfect, but it actually worked out pretty good for this project. Once I got my lines on there, I'm just going to cut this out and then we will apply it to our heart. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of Mod Podge on here. We will spread that out pretty thin. You don't want it to be too thick. That causes bubbles and wrinkles. And then we're gonna press our paper down on it and we are going to smooth out any bubbles or wrinkles that we get and let this completely dry. Once it's dry, I decided that I wanted to finish off those edges. So I grabbed some distressing ink and my dauber and I just kind of go around those edges and to me, it makes it look like this belongs on there. To make a stand for this, I'm gonna take my tumbling tower block, glue it onto the bottom and this project will be finished.
For our next project, we're gonna use this little house sign. I got this at the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure it came from one of the dollar stores. We're gonna use this wording that I printed out with my computer. I'll put a link to it down below if you'd like a copy. We're gonna use one of these red glitter heart stickers. I got these from Hobby Lobby last year. We're gonna use some Waverly chalk paint in white, my pencil, and some permanent markers. So the first thing we're gonna do is give our little house a good coat of paint. It took about two coats to cover my words completely, and I did paint the front and the back of this and left it to dry. Once our paint was dry, I take my pencil and I just kind of smudge around those edges just to give it some depth and dimension. Then I'm going to take my wording and I scribble on the back of it with my pencil. You guys have seen us do this a hundred times. We'll lay it down on our project and then we're going to trace over it with our pencil and this transfers it onto our project. Now, if you have a cutting machine, you could cut these words out. If you have good handwriting, you could freehand this. You could use stickers, whatever works best for you. I just really like this method and I really like being able to show you how you can make projects, whether you have a cutting machine or not. Once I get my letters transferred on, I use my markers and fill it in. Now I'm using these graphic illustration markers from Hobby Lobby. I really like these markers, but if you don't have any, you could use a permanent marker like a Sharpie or one of the jot markers. Once we get our words on, we're gonna take one of these little hearts and stick it at the top and this project will be finished. For this project, it is so simple. We're going to use one of these little vases. I got it from the thrift store. Some of these bamboo skewers, some of this heart scatter from the Dollar Tree, some ribbon, and some greenery and baby's breath from the Dollar Tree. All we are going to do is figure out what part of our greenery we want to use. I pull off about three pieces and stick it down into my little vase. I love this little vase. It came in a pack of three at the thrift store. Then I'm going to cut some of my baby's breath. I cut three little pieces of it and I stick those down in there. I like using threes when I do things like this. Then we're gonna take three of those little hearts and three of our skewers. And it was about this point that I realized I needed to you know, make these skewers some color besides the brown wood. So I grabbed some green paint and used a paper towel and just kind of painted my little skewers just so they would blend in with my greenery that was in there and wouldn't stick out like a sore thumb. Once these were dry, I'm gonna stick my little hearts on to each one of them, make them kind of look like a flower, and then I'm just gonna trim them off at different lengths. Now we will stick those down into our little vase and arrange those in place. You just do what looks good to your eye. The last thing I'm gonna do is take a piece of ribbon, wrap it around that vase about three times, and then tie it into a bow, and this project will be finished. For our last project, you know I had to make a bead garland. We're gonna use some red and white beads from Walmart, some red and white twine. I think this came from Dollar General, some white Waverly chalk paint, some crimson Waverly chalk paint, and two little wooden hearts from the Dollar Tree. One comes in the chalk looking set, and then one came from the little scatter, and I'm going to use my little hole punch to punch a hole in my smaller heart. I'm also going to use the rest of this rub-on transfer from the Dollar Tree. The first thing I did was paint one side of my heart with my crimson chalk paint. It took about three coats to get this covered really well, and then I let it dry. Once that was dry, I'm gonna paint the other side with my white chalk paint and leave it to dry. 
Now that all of our paint is dry, I'm going to take that little rub on transfer. I love this thing, y'all. I want to find some more of these. And then I use my little spatula and I rub over it really good and it transfers onto my heart. Now, it didn't quite cover all the way to the end, so you can see that I'm just kind of piecing it together to make sure that I have writing all over this and don't have any big gaps anywhere. Once we get that one done, I decided to take what was left over of this little um, script part here and put it onto the red heart. Now, it didn't make words. It was just kind of pieced together. But again, I didn't really care about that. I was wanting more of just having the script on there. I can't read it anyway. I think it's in French. Now I'm going to take my gray ink and my dauber and I'm going to finish up those edges. I just have a thing about finishing these edges so it looks like it was meant to be that way. Then we're going to take our twine and thread it through both of our hearts and tie it into a knot. Make sure you get it up at the top when you tie it. I tie it double knotted and then I trim it off and then I cut off a piece that's about 20 inches long. I got ahead of myself and started making a tassel by wrapping my twine around my hand about 20 times. And then I realized I couldn't put it on yet. I have to put my beads on. Duh. So I laid it to the side. Now I'm going to put my twine onto a big darning needle and then I start threading my beads on. I do a pattern of two red and one white until I get it as long as I want it. I think I ended up using about 23 or 24 beads here. You just do what you like and make it as long as you want it to be. We'll keep putting our beads on until we get it finished. Then we're going to take our needle off and take those loops that I had made and tie them on to the end with a double knot. Make sure you get it as close to that bottom bead as you can possibly get it. We're going to trim that off. Then we're going to take another piece of twine and wrap it around the top about three or four times and tie it into a double knot and trim it off. Now we can cut open all of those loops and we have a tassel. I wanted this to be softer, so I just grabbed a brush and I brushed it until it unraveled. And once I did that, this project was complete. Hey y'all, it's Trish. As some of you know, when we do these tear tray projects, I set it up a little bit different than I do our regular video. We normally go from one project right into the other. That way we can get them all done because there's so many of these tiny little mini projects. All right, let's get started. For these first two projects, we're going to use these little signs. The square one I picked up from Dollar General when it was 90% off. It's missing a piece, but I didn't need that anyway. And then this little house looking one I picked up from the thrift store, but I'm pretty sure that it came from Hobby Lobby at some point. We're also going to use these graphics that I designed. I will put a link down below if you would like to have a copy. And we're going to be using some paint. I'm going to use Waverly Chalk paint in white, a pencil, and some permanent markers. The first thing I did was grab my sanding block and sand these down a little bit. You don't have to do a lot. I just wanted to take as much of that wording off as I could. This is going to help me when I start painting. Then we're going to take our Waverly chalk paint and we're going to give these a really good coat, set them aside, let them dry, and then we'll touch it up. We call this giving it a coat and a half. 
Once our paint is dry, I'm going to transfer my graphics over to them and I'm using my favorite method. All you do is cut apart your graphics, scribble on the back with a pencil, lay it where you want it on your project and then trace over it. This is going to transfer it onto your project or at least it's going to transfer the lines so that you can copy over them. Once you get those on there, you're just going to use either paint and a small brush or some permanent markers to fill them in. I know if you have a cutting machine, you could use a cutting machine and do this easily. Yes, I do have one, but we like to show you guys that even if you don't have a cutting machine, you can still make these kind of projects for your tear tray or for your home decor. Now I'm just filling these in with my permanent marker. For the small lines and the letters, I used a graphic illustration marker. This is just finer. You could also use a fine tip Sharpie. And then for the heart, I used my bigger permanent marker. Then I took a pencil and just kind of went around the edges, smoothed it out with my finger, and these projects are finished. For this next one, I'm going to use this unfinished mini rolling pin. I got this from Hobby Lobby at the back, some Waverly chalk paint in white, a black furniture repair marker from the Dollar Tree, and a permanent marker. Now for this one, I decided I wanted it to have that two-tone look. I'm going for like a black and white look on my tear tray. So I wanted to stain the little handles on these in the very end. I like using these furniture repair markers. They're not as messy as stain. They don't smell and they dry instantly. Once I got the end stained, I'm gonna come back in with my paint and I'm going to paint the rolling part of my little rolling pin. I'm using the Waverly chalk paint in white because that was the look I was going for. Now you could completely paint all of yours. You could stain all of it, whatever your preference. Once my paint is dry, I'm going to come back with a pencil and I'm tracing in just a little heart and then I'm going to fill that in with my permanent markers. And that's all I'm doing to this one. Now, you could add a word to this if you wanted to. You could put home or family or your last name, but I like to keep it simple and I was really happy with how it turned out with just the little heart. Now for our next project, I'm going to use this unfinished window that I got from Hobby Lobby, a piece of leftover garland from Christmas, and some of this boxwood pick from Walmart, and then my Waverly chalk paint in white. The first thing I'm going to do is paint this, and really that's the only thing that I'm going to do to it other than make my little wreath. I love this window. As soon as I saw it, I knew what I wanted to do with it. It was back in the unfinished wood section at Hobby Lobby, but I will say that you should measure your tray and make sure it's going to fit. I just have one of the little mini tier trays and my biggest opening is four inches and this does not fit inside of it. I ended up having to stand it up outside of the tray and it still looks good, but it didn't fit. So if you're going to get one of these, you might want to check your tear tray, make sure it's going to fit in there, or you could do the same thing I did. While our paint is drying, I'm going to take this leftover piece of garland from Christmas and I'm trimming it down. It was just too fuzzy and I didn't like how it looked, but when I trim it and then form it into a circle, now I have a cute little wreath. I love how this looks. Now I wanted to give it something extra, so I took this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart and I'm cutting off these little leaves and I'm going to glue them down. I put a little bit of glue on the end and then for the next one, I'm going to take the end of it and push it right up under the top of the first one. This kind of makes it look like that it just flows all the way around. Now I did have to take off some of the leaves on the inside because to me it was just too full, but I was really happy with how this turned out. You don't have to do this if you don't want to. You could just use the garland. That looks fine too, but I thought the boxwood kind of elevated it and made it look like it goes for all year. Once we're finished with that, we'll use a little glue to attach it and this project is complete. 
Now for this one, it's the simplest one we're going to do. I'm just going to take one of these wood slices that I got from Hobby Lobby, some of these finial dowel caps, I think they were a quarter of an inch, and then I'm using a little bit of clear wax. This is the Waverly Clear Wax. You really don't have to use the clear wax. This was just something that I thought to do, but it wasn't necessary. I put some of it on the top of my wood round, and then I decided to also add it to the little finials that's going to be the feet of this. We're making a mini riser to go on our tear tray. Y'all, you don't need the wax. Once I had finished that, I figured out where I wanted my feet to go. Then I'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the bottom, stick these down, and this little riser is complete. Now this is going to be another simple one. We're going to use one of these little peat pots that I had left over from last year. One of these little styrofoam balls, some of this boxwood pick that I got from Walmart, and some Waverly chalk paint. I decided to paint my little peat pot. Now you really don't have to. I like the way that it looks rustic without the paint, but I had this theme in my head of the black and white you know, neutral tear tray. So I decided to go ahead and give mine a really good coat and then we're just going to set it aside and let that paint completely dry. Once the paint is dry, I'm going to add my initial to the front. I used a pencil to sketch it on just to get my dimensions and then I'm going to fill it in with a permanent marker and that's all there is to that one. Now I'm going to take one of those little styrofoam balls. I'll use a little bit of hot glue and glue it into the pot. And then we're gonna take some of these little limbs off of this pick and glue those in. Now I did end up cutting them down because I thought they were a little too tall and I used my awl to punch a hole in that styrofoam. That just helps it go in a little bit better. I put a little bit of hot glue on the end and these stay in perfectly. I was actually really happy with how this piece turned out. Now I'm using this boxwood pick because I got it for 97 cent at Walmart and I love how it looks, but you could use any greenery that you want to use. Now this is another simple greenery piece. We're just going to use some of these little styrofoam balls in small and medium and some of this adhesive back moss that I got from Walmart. All we're going to do is cover these styrofoam balls with this moss. Do you have to have the adhesive back? No, you don't. You could use the moss from the Dollar Tree and use some glue, but y'all, that stuff is so messy. This stuff here cuts down on that tremendously. They do sell this adhesive back boss at Hobby Lobby, but it's like 13 or $14 a pack, and it's only $6 a pack at Walmart, and it works perfectly. All I'm doing is cutting off some little pieces. I peel off the back of this and then stick it to the ball. You can butt it up against each other. You can't tell where the seams are. Sometimes it overlapped and it worked in perfectly. I just love how these turned out. I love adding green pieces to my tear trays. I think that it just kind of brightens it up. So that little pot that we did with the greenery in it and these little moss balls are really just going to be the perfect finishing touches on these tear trays. And they're so easy to make. If you've been with us any time, you know I have to do a bead garland. I'm going to use these black and white wooden beads from Walmart and some twine that I got from the Dollar Tree. I'm gonna start off with a tassel. All I do is wrap my twine around my hand about 20 times, and then we're going to trim that off. I'll slip those loops off of my hand, take the end of my twine, and tied around those loops into a double knot. You want to make sure that you get this really tight. We're gonna trim off the short end, and then we're gonna take the long end and measure out about 20 inches and cut that off. Now we're gonna go back to that tassel. I'm gonna gather it up in my hand. I take another little piece of twine and wrap it around the top about a half an inch down. I'm gonna wrap it about four times and then tie it into a double knot. Make sure you get this tight. 
I do put just a little bit of hot glue on mine. This just helps hold it in place. And then I'm going to trim those ends off. Now we can cut open those loops and we have a tassel, just that easy. I'm gonna fluff it out and then I'm gonna trim off the ends and this is going to give me a pretty tassel for one end of my garland. Now, once we get that trimmed off, I'm going to take a plastic darning needle. This is just a really large needle. I put my twine through it, and then I'm gonna start putting my beads on. I decided to do a pattern of two white, one black, all the way down. And I did it until I had about 16 inches worth of beads. I did measure it out, and it came almost exactly to 16 inches. But you do it as long as you would like. Once you get all of your beads on there, we're going to make another tassel. I'm doing the same thing I did before. Just wrap it around your hand about 20 times, slip off those loops, and then I'm going to tie it onto the end of my garland, getting it as close to those beads as I can. We'll do a double knot, trim it off. Then we're gonna pull it down, take another piece of twine, wrap around the top about four times, and tie another double knot. Once you get that on, put a little bit of glue to secure it and then trim off those ends. Now we're going to cut open those loops, fluff it out and trim it up and we have a bead garland. Okay, so some of you said that you would like to be able to buy some laser cut pieces that I did with my machine. So I am going to be setting up an Etsy shop and these pieces are the pieces that I made that I will sell for your family style tear tray. Now the first thing I have is this little family, um, this little round family sign. Of course, I have still on mine, that's my name, but it would be personalized for your name. I have not glued anything down yet because I want to whitewash this background. I just wanted to show you what was available. I think I'm gonna offer it as a kit where you can paint it, glue it down and everything yourself. And then I will offer it as a full set where I actually do the painting and the gluing and mail it to you. Those will be two different prices. So I'll have two different listings for those. But this is going to be a personalized name sign. Then we're gonna have this one that says, this is us. Again, it's not glued down yet because I do want to whitewash the back. We're gonna have this little leaner sign that says, welcome. We're gonna have a little cutting board that says, home sweet home. And then we're going to have a party of sign. Now, since there's just me and my husband, we are a party of two, but of course this can be personalized to you and how many members are in your family. Now this one has the little faux ship lap lines that I cut with my machine. And I'm just going to whitewash the back of these, then I'm gonna glue them down and I'm going to stain them black. I will rush through this so you don't have to watch the whole thing. And then I'll show you the completed set at the end. To do a whitewash, I'm going to use Waverly chalk paint. When I get to the end, I like to put some water in mine and shake it up, and then it works kind of like a whitewash. It's not thick like my regular paint, and that's what I'm going to use. So I'm going to give these pieces a good coat of my watered down paint or a whitewash, whatever you prefer to call it. I did paint the front and the back and this dries really fast. By the time I had painted all the fronts, they were ready to turn over and paint the back. That's a personal preference. While I was painting them, I realized that four of them were gonna need a way to stand up. So I grabbed four of these little wood blocks from the Dollar Tree and I painted those as well. I will be including these blocks in the pieces that I'm selling so that you'll have a way of standing these up. Now we are going to stain our wording that goes on our signs. I'm using a furniture repair marker. This just worked out better for me. It's not as messy. And y'all, these pieces are very fragile. The machine has to cut these so small that they break really easily. So just be careful with them while you're using them. I did break some, but I was able to put them back together when I glued it and you couldn't even tell it. I am thinking though that I could glue these down even if you buy the unfinished pieces and it'll make them sturdier whenever I mail them out but that's up to you you just let me know if you would like them to be glued down or not either way is fine 
Now I'm going to take my pencil and I'm going to go back over my shiplap lines. I just thought that this helped bring them back out. You could still see them, but this just kind of finished it up. And when you run your finger over it, it kind of blends it in and it makes it look like it's real pieces of wood put together. Then I'm going to take my furniture repair marker and I'm going to go around the edges of each piece. And this is just going to finish it off. To me, it makes it look more professional. I was careful not to get it on the front or the back. And it also brought in that color theme that I was wanting on my tear tray. I love to see the black and white together. Now we're going to start putting our letters or our words down onto our pieces. I did line them up before I glued them down. And on this welcome sign, I've decided that I think the best thing to do on future pieces is to score those letters onto that sign. This was really hard to line up. And I think if I had scored it on there, it would have made it a lot easier. Now for the glue, you want something with a fine tip. I'm using Loctite glue and that works really well for me. I started off using these tweezers but you see I broke the M with them so I ended up just using my fingers. It was much easier. I put just a little bit of glue on the back and then I stick it down. Now if some squeezed out I did just use a soft brush and go over it and take it off so that it wasn't clumped up and once it dried you couldn't even tell it. I love how these pieces look once you put them together. Now, again, I can go ahead and glue these down for you. And then you could just whitewash the whole thing and then come back and stain or paint over the top of your letters. And that would work as well. So whatever works best for you, you can see that I was having to put pieces together. But again, once it was all down, you couldn't even tell. Y'all, I absolutely love how this set came out. It was perfect on my tear tray and I think that it just made a piece that you can leave out all year and it looks gorgeous. We're going to continue to put all of these words down until we get everything glued down and our pieces are ready for our tray. Now we're going to add our little stands and all I did was take these little blocks. I put a little bit of hot glue on the top. I stand up the sign and then stick the piece to the back. This way it's sitting the way it needs to sit. It's flush and I don't have to worry about it falling over forward because if you get it in the wrong place, that can happen. Once you get all your little stands on there, this set is complete and it's ready for your tear tray. Thank you so much for watching today. If you saw something you liked, we hope you'll give us a big thumbs up. Leave us a comment and let us know what you think and if you have any suggestions. We just love hearing from y'all and it really does help our channel grow. We are also over on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, and Pinterest and would love it if you would click the link below and join us over there as well. If you enjoyed this episode, check out these videos for even more DIY inspiration. Bye, y'all.